Hi, good afternoon. Is this the interpreter? Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Martha Adams. I'm going to be the judge presiding over an initial appearance here today in Orange County, Florida. Um, my defendant is Mr. Maximilian Claver, and it's my understanding he is in need of a Creole interpreter. And are you my Creole interpreter for that? Yes. Okay, and may I get your name? My name is Wolf, R-U-T-H. Okay, and have you been sworn in today? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So I do have Mr. Claver here in the courtroom. This is on case number 2023-CF4733AO. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Claver. You're here on a charge of criminal mischief. Bonjour, Mr. Claver. Là, où on charge criminal mischief qui est sur l'avril? Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of details in the report as to the crime charged. So I am going to give the state 24 hours to get some additional information. Well, by later, 24 hours, then you can get more information. Um, that being said, there is a $1,000 bond that is on this case. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, you are more than welcome to bond out if you can. If you do not bond out, I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Interpreter, just because I can't understand what he's saying, can you please advise him not to speak on the facts of the case? Okay, si c'est des cas, on va parler, puis on va parler des cas. Si c'est des pour raison, on va pas parler, pas parler de ça. So, Mr. Claver, if the state is unable to get additional information and you're still here tomorrow, you may be released on your own recognizance or so that you don't have to pay money to get out of jail. Monsieur, si ou la demain si je veux et puis les fini l'état joine et exactement quelques informations de chaque jour et ou pas la demain si je veux, ça veut dire que ou pas besoin de payer aucun argent. Okay. So, like I said, you can either bond out or I'll see you tomorrow. Si vous voulez ou ka la gete tout sou gen kòb lan Ou bien tout, nous avons demain si Dieu veut. Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Merci à vous. Bonne chance, monsieur. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Madam Interpreter, for your help today. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome, owner. Thank you for the service. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so now I have two Spanish in jail arraignments. Let me just get the interpreter. Just one? Okay. And, Your Honor, there is an offer for this one. However, we were not able to go over it. Um, I don't know if we want to use the interpreter. I do have the Spanish plea form ready. Okay. Good afternoon. This is Daryl Rodriguez, certified Spanish interpreter, previously sworn. Hi, good afternoon. This is Judge Martha Adams. We're at the Booking and Release Center at the jail. Uh, in front of me, I have Wilson Cancuz, C-A-N-C-U-Z. His case number is 2023-CT-2329-AO, and he does have the headset on. Is the interpreter connection has been established? Okay. Good. Good afternoon, sir. You are here on a charge of driving without a valid driver's license. Was that something that you were wanting to try to resolve today, or did you want to have some additional time to speak more with your attorney? Y si terminaría hoy, qué pasaría? If I wanted to resolve it today, what would happen? 
I believe the offer is an adjudication. Uh, I would give you credit for the 10 days that you've served previously in jail. There are court costs, which are $306. And then um, the other citation you received for um, a load dropping charge, I'll go ahead and dismiss that. So in essence, you would get out today and I would give you a year to pay the money back that you owe. ¿Cuánto, ¿Cuánto sería la cantidad? How much would the amount be again? How much, how much will what, sir? I'm sorry. How much would the amount be? For the amount that you would owe? Sí. Yes. It's $306 for the court cost. I believe because you have the Office of the Public Defender, they would add an additional 50. So the total would be $356. Now, sir, I do also have to um, advise you, though, that there is an immigration hold that has been placed on you by the Department of Homeland Security. Um, and I believe there is also a warrant out of another county. Um, so while you may finish all of your business here in Orange County, it's not necessarily a definite that you would be released from jail. Bueno, bueno, y si tengo el otro cargo allá en el otro condado, ¿qué pasaría si yo me, si dijera que pagara eso? ¿Me fuera a pagar allá con ellos o me quedara aquí? Well, since I have that other charge from that other county, what would happen if I were to say that I would pay this? Do I have to go and pay over there or do I stay here? Yes, so because you have that hold from the other county, um, does it have a bond? So it has a bond amount of $2,000. You can either pay the bond and get out of jail, um, or you can wait for that county to come and pick you up. They won't even start that process until you resolve this case. And Your Honor, I do just want him to be aware that that ice hold um, that, of course, can be another thing that may hold him from getting released. And there's a nice hold that appears immigration is already aware of the situation. Uh, however, if you want him to also be aware, of course, any plea could result in deportation. I can't tell you for sure that this charge of a no valid driver's license is going to cause immigration to deport you, but I don't know what your other charges are for or what your criminal history is like. So your attorney is correct because that hold from immigration is still there. Even if you resolve this case and the other case, uh, you still may not get out of jail. They may decide to take you down to Chrome in South Florida. Knowing all of those things, what do you think you'd like to do today? Would you like to try to resolve this case, or would you like to have some more time to speak to your attorney? Bueno, y si, de, y si diría que yo terminaría con eso, inmigración venía pronto por mí, o, o cuánto tiempo más iré a estar aquí? Well, if I were to say that I will resolve it, would immigration then come and pick me up soon, or how long would I be staying here? Well, again, sir, that would depend on the other county that you have a hold from. Um, as soon as you, if you were to resolve this case today, then that other county would be notified mm -hmm. and they can come and pick you up. Or like I said, you can pay that $2,000 bond and that will release you from that charge. So let's just say, for example, you resolve your case today you pay a $2,000 bond, immigration still has a hold on you. I honestly cannot tell you how long it will take for them to come and deal with you. I believe they have up to 30 days to do so. Um, but then the other alternative would be that you resolve this case today and then you wait for the other county to pick you up. They transfer you to that county and then you would still have to deal with immigration. Mm 
Bueno, bueno entonces que se resuelva el caso de hoy, entre así a lo mejor el otro condado viene por mí y más pronto arregle todos mi, 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 los casos que yo tengo encima. ¿Me entiendes? Well, and I think it's better if we resolve the case today and then maybe that other county can come by and pick me up and then we can try to get rid of those other cases. Okay, that sounds good with me. So this would be you pleading to the no valid driver's license charge. I'd give you credit for the 10 days that you've been here and I'll give you a year to pay that money back. Um, if you end up needing more time, you can always write to me and let me know. And then that TR citation that you also received, the 2023-TR-67867-AO, I'll go ahead and dismiss that because you are entering a plea to the criminal charge. Okay, did you sign, can you sign the plea form for me? Okay, so sir, they are handing me the plea form that you signed. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that are on this plea form? No, así está bien. Pero, oh, pero había pagado una fianza yo de 500 dólares que supuestamente me dieron por la no licencia. ¿Qué pasó con eso? No solo es la pregunta. No, ya me... no that's... No, that's fine. Uh, well, actually, I did pay a $500 bond for the case of driving without a license. I want to know what would happen with that. That's my last question. But I think what happened was when you failed to appear at your court date, that money got taken, and then that's why you're here today. That's why you're stuck here, is because you failed to appear at your last case. So... Um, did you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to this charge? We would advise him to enter a plea of no contest, Your Honor, but of course it is his choice. Sir, has anybody forced you or threatened you to enter a plea today? No. no. And you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that this can cause problems with immigration? Yes. Okay, sir. I will go ahead and accept your plea. I will adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to 10 days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the 10 days that you've previously served. I will release you from this charge and this charge only. There are the court costs, which includes cost of prosecution. I'll also include the public defender lien. And as I stated before, because you are resolving the criminal charge, I'll drop that other citation uh, pursuant to that. Your Honor, just out of an abundance of caution, I don't think this was went over, gone over. Um, the, since we don't know what his other case is, I'm hoping he's not on probation. Of course, any plea would violate probation. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I, that thought crossed my mind. Okay, so sir, in what county was that? What county? What county? Okay, so sir, this does resolve everything that you have here in Orange County, that other charge for the DUI out of Lake County. Um, generally, they have 24 hours to come and pick you up, so hopefully they will do that. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was the only Spanish case I had today. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Have a great day. You too. Okay, this should be Benjamin Contreras. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Contreras. You are here on case number 2023-MM1222AO. This is a charge of resisting without violence and criminal mischief. I have that he has a total of 46 days. Are we gonna to try to resolve this or set it off for trial? Your Honor, this is Mr. Contras. Um, the state has not made an offer on this case. We'd be entering a plea of not guilty at this time. 
make an offer. We're here in Division 84, pretrial conference date will be May 11th at 8.45. Give me an offer to resolve it, please. Okay, you're all set, sir. Good. And I apologize, you. what were those court dates? May, pretrial conference date, May 11th at 8.45 in courtroom 4B. Okay. So May 11th is your next court date. We'll talk to your attorney in more detail, okay? With everything. So there's no possibility I can get go home today? It was just only $15 worth of... So don't, don't, don't tell me about the facts of your case. Unfortunately, the state doesn't have a, the ability to Possession do that. Possession of cocaine. Don't, it was only like $15. Do not say anything. Also, the judge just told you this is resisting an officer without violence and criminal mischief. Resisting an officer? That was that was my don't, last don't, charge. Don't it was in the, the facts of the case. Oh, Good luck with everything, though. I'll let you... I'll let your attorney know. I don't speak English. I just understood everything you said. Okay. Uh, next, I have Jamie Raul Ferrisalamo. Yeah, you know you are. Okay. So I do show that he's here on case number 2023-MM164180, um, but I also show that Maybe there's some motions that are pending with evaluations. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor, I believe so. If I have a moment to double check. Your, Your Honor. No, please don't say anything. Your Honor, the state didn't make an offer, so trial date? I mean, pre-trial date? Pre-trial conference date will be April 27th at 8.30 in courtroom 9B. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. There's no offer at this time and subject to evaluations. Okay. So because the state did not make an offer at this time, sir, we're going to go ahead and set you off for a pretrial conference. That's in Division 82 on April 27th at 8.30 a.m. And, and we'll officially enter a plea of not guilty at this time, Your Honor. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, give, me three, you wouldn't give me a 323 on it and a dismiss on tab at 9, huh? I don't know what that is, sir, so no, I, I can't give that your to attorney you. Will, yeah, I, your attorney will contact you. I, I might give you my packet number, and you check it out on the computer. I think the number is 916-217-8529, AC11. Okay, we'll AC check it out, but I don't think there's an offer right now. Check it on the computer. I'll give you a 208. Okay. Email your attorney. Are we missing any more arraignments? I feel like there's one more. Um, I have another one, but it's down in between the other pages. I think they're just going alphabetically at this point. Oh, that's what's throwing me off. I apologize. Yeah, I do have the move. I apologize. It just that threw me off. My apologies. So then we have. No, it works. It's down in the hall. Yes. Okay, so we're here on case number 2023 MM2486 AO. This is K. Patrick Jamal Burks. Um, no, no, that's not him. No, Your Honor, we're here for. Okay, well, on Mr. Burks, I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent him. Do you want to waive his appearance here today? Your Honor, if we can reset him, he has a credit time served offer. Okay, I'll reset Mr. Burks to tomorrow. Is this Terry Petit? No, he's mental health. Okay, so on Mr. Petit's case, 2023 MM2485 AO, it's a criminal mischief. Would there be an offer on that one? Your Honor, there's no offer on that one. If we can just have the public defender's office appointed um, and any bonds that need to be set, and I'll waive his appearance. Okay, so I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office. I am finding that there's probable cause. Um, this one will keep the bond set at $500. I don't know that I can.
can tell him he can't return since he's kind of stuck here. So just go with that. How about Franklin Rule? I hear, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Rule, good afternoon. You're here on case number 2023, MM24768O. 2476 I'll appoint the public defender's office. This is a trespass charge. Was this something we were going to try to resolve? No, Your Honor. Mr. Rule has been found incompetent to proceed in other cases. Um, at this time, we'd be asking that he be released on his own recognizance. I believe there are still currently um, some open cases going through competency court with Judge Lattimore at this time. Do we know? I mean, I'm not inclined to just... Your Honor, there's case law. Um, that I'm a, a, no, no, no. You need to understand what I'm saying. I, I understand that there's case law, but I also need to understand, like, when you say there's open, I have cases that have been open for five years, and the PDs can't get the defendants to come and get their evaluations done. So while I understand you're saying there's open cases, I kind of need to know, like, what's the status of those open cases? Yes, Your Honor. So the current case I'm looking at is 2020 CF. 00906AO. An amended conditional release order was just entered on February 15th, 2023. He was adjudicated incompetent on September 22nd, 2020. In this case, What did the amended order say? Did it, what were his conditions of release? That he'll reside at the shelters. That he'll report to the public defender's office once a month to check in. Um, that he, the usual standard, he won't drink or use illegal substances. He'll not possess any firearms or weapons and take any medications as needed. And when is the, in that particular case, when is he next scheduled for a hearing on that one? Your Honor, he's set for May 4th. Okay. Did the state wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Rule, can I ask you a question? Do you have um, a cell phone or an email address? I have nothing out here. Okay. White trash homeless. Oh, it's okay. Well, I don't necessarily think you're that. Have you been able to stay in contact with your public defender on your other cases? What other cases? Do I have any other pending? Uh, apparently, there's one where you're supposed to see Judge Lattimore in May. Does that sound familiar? May. What charge? Mm, I don't know. It's a felony charge. It would be May 4th. Um, here's the only thing I'm concerned about is I just want to make sure that you stay in contact with the PD's office because if you don't show up and stay in contact with them, the next time we have court, if they don't know where you are, you could get a warrant for your arrest and I hate for that to happen. Um, I'll go ahead and release you on your own recognizance, um, but I do need you to continue to make sure that you keep in contact with the public defender's office. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and in addition, I am going to order that you not return um, to this location. Colonial on uh, Westmoreland or Paramore, wherever, at 7-Eleven. Say that again? You can let her tell you exactly where. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I just don't want you to go back to that 7-Eleven on 605 West Colonial Drive. Okay? Got that? 605 West Colonial Drive. All right. Should I need to sign anything or am I uh, You're going to be released on your recognizance, but don't miss your court date. Stay in touch with your attorney, okay? What time will I probably get out here? Probably around midnight. I, it's probably uh, sooner than that, but I don't know the exact time, okay? Sooner than that, all right. Thanks. Make sure you call our office once you get released. Yes, ma'am. I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. This is LaToya Solomon. Yes. Ms. Solomon, you're here on case number 2023-MM1182-AO. This is a failure to appear for an arraignment that was on March 30th for a charge of trespass. Mm -hmm. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent her. Um, does she want to try to resolve it today, or was she wanting to just try to get out and come back? Your Honor, I believe she'd like to resolve today. Is that what you just said, Mr. George? Yes. yes, she'd like to resolve today. The offer from the state is an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, no return to 1850, 1815 um, Acme Street, 
cost investigation of $223.40 to which agency? Orlando Police Department. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Solomon, I'm being handed your plea form that you signed. Did you have any questions about any of the rights on the form? No, ma'am. And she indicated you're going to enter a plea of no contest. Has anybody forced you or threatened you to do that? No, ma'am. And you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea today could subject you to deportation? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, I will go ahead and accept your plea. I will adjudicate you guilty. I'm going to assume she's got at least 12, two, thir three days um, in the Orange County Jail with credit for the three days she's previously served. I'll release you from this charge and this charge only. I am going to order that you not return to 1815 Acme, Acme Street. There are court costs, uh, which also includes a, there will also be cost of investigation to the Orlando Police Department and the amount of $223.40. Ms. Solomon, I'll go ahead and give you a year to pay that money back. If you don't pay it off in a year, they will try to suspend your driver's license. So you can always write to me if you need more time. Okay. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. You're going to go that way. Okay, so now we're at, uh, this should be Ms. Ber Burgess? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, Ms. Burgess. You are here on case number 2023 CF471480. This is a charge of possession of cocaine. I did review the charging affidavit. I am finding that there's probable cause. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, I'll go ahead and stay the bond at $1,500. Uh, or $1,500, but I am going to note you're currently out on bond in case number 2023-CF1454-AO. That information was filed on March 24th for uh, possession of dimethylate. Dimethylate. I can't say that word. I can't ever say it. In any case, uh, Mr. Kyle Blythe represents you on that charge. I am going to revoke the bond on that case, but I'm sure that your attorneys will get in touch with uh, Judge Strobridge to see if they can get you a bond hearing in that case. Okay? Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, she revoked your bond and you're out on bond. So she gave you a bond on the next. Okay? Sounds like you have um, a private no, attorney. I can't buy that. No, because you have no bond on one case. You have to contact your attorney, okay? Good luck with everything. And on the other case, the public defender's office was appointed? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. This is Colin Campbell. Is it Scullion? Scullion, yes, ma'am. Okay. Did I say it properly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Mr. Scullion, you're here on case number 2023-CF4645-AO. This is an arrest warrant that was signed by Judge Duckworth. Uh, he did set your bonds in the amount of $500 for count one, $500 on count two for a total of $1,000. He also ordered that you not return to the scene and no contact with the victims. And I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Um, am I able to see again? Going to say anything about the facts of your case? What are you going to, uh, I'm advising you not to say anything about the facts of your case. What was your question? Yes. Yes. Nothing. Sorry. Are you are you advising me here? Are yes. You I'm advising you not to speak about the facts of the case right now. Anything you say will be used against you in the future. You'll have time to talk to an attorney in more detail. So if you find you, out quickly, do you have a question? Just because we don't have time. To You're going to have, what's going to happen is you're going to have an attorney who's actually going to get assigned to your case and who's going to work in more detail with you. So what you're going to do is once you bond out, contact our office, find yes. out who that attorney yes. is, because you're going to have to repeat everything you say to me to them anyways. They're the ones who's going to help you. And my priority is to bond out 
Mm -hmm. Should it be clear I can pay my own bond? You can pay if you can pay your own bond, you can, you can bondsman, a family member, all of those things work, okay? Yes. Appreciate your help. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay, the next case I had was John Casado. Okay, are you Mr. Casado? Okay, sir, you're here on case number 2023 MO 339 AO. This is a charge of possession um, and consumption prohibited in public parking lots and certain private lots. It's under a um, county ordinance, I believe. That being said, I do show you have 34 days time served. Is there a way that we can try to resolve this? Your Honor, no? there is an offer of an adjudication of guilt credit for time served. However, he has related felonies directly related to this charge. And for that reason, we'd be entering a plea of not guilty at this time. Okay. So, sir, I will go ahead and note that this is going to be set for a pretrial conference in Division 62. Pretrial conference date will be May 11th at 1.30. Courtroom 12C. I'm sorry, was that 12C? Yes. Thank you. And I apologize, what date was that? Sorry. May, May 11th, 11th at 1.30. Okay, the next case I have is Devante Antoine Spoonie. That one's yours. I knew I heard an S name. Hey, good afternoon, sir. Are you Devante Spoonie? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Spoonie, I have you here on two cases, um, but you also have an attorney present. Did you want to put your name on the record? Yes, good afternoon. Lizette Dominguez on behalf of Mr. Spoonie. Okay. So, Ms. Dominguez, both of these are arrest warrants. The first one I have is in 2023 CF 3766AO. That's out of Division 12. Um, this was for failure to update a permanent address that was signed by Judge Carestes. Um, he is entitled to a bond. I will set his bond at $1,000 and order that he does um, do whatever qualifying or reporting requirements are necessary for him if he's released. The second case I have is 2023 CF. 4640AO, that's out of Division 11. That was a warrant that was signed by Judge Duckworth. Now, it's my understanding that count one, he's entitled to a bond, but count two, he's not. Is that, that is, correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. So um, I can give him a bond of $5,000 on count one. Count two is a PBL, so... Um, that bond will remain at none, and I will just also include that he is not to have any contact with the victim or the family. Was there anything else, Ms. Dominguez, that you wanted to put on the record? or Your Honor, oh. I would ask that he also have no contact with any minors. Okay. Um, I, does that, is that going to be an issue for him, to have no contact with any minors while he's incarcerated? No, Your Honor. Okay. So no contact with anyone under the age of 18, and um, you're good to go. So I'm sure she'll try to get you a bond hearing in front of Judge Navarro in regards to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dominguez. Sorry that took so long. <laughs> 
So next, I'm going to uh, Adrian Maurice Jordan. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Jordan. You're here on case number 2023-MM173AA. I did review the charging affidavit. I'm finding probable cause. I can appoint the public defender's office and give you a bond, or we can try to resolve it today. What would you like to do? Resolve it. Resolve it? And there was an offer from the state, um, and I believe that Ms. George went over the plea offer with him. It is an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, no return to racetracks seven, at 700 South OBT. Is that what you all discussed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and he signed the plea form? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so Mr. Jordan, you did sign the plea form. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that are on that form? No, ma'am. That's Tyler, uh, Lieutenant Brick. Uh, he's harassing me. No reason at all. <laughs> Lieutenant Breck? Lieutenant Breck. Oh, Breck? Yeah, whatever uh, his name is. Is it Steve Breck, the big tall guy? Yeah. Yeah, he harasses me too. I wouldn't take it personally. He's obnoxious. That's no reason. I know. He's kind of a jerk, though. I tell him that to his face all the time. So just try to stay away from him, okay? Try but I do have your plea form that you're going to enter a no contest plea. Did anybody force you or threaten you to do that today? No, ma'am. And you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen that you um, could be subject to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, sir, I'll go ahead and accept your plea. I am going to adjudicate you guilty. I'll give you, uh, sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days that you've previously served. You're going to be released from this charge and this charge only. There are court costs, and then just don't return back to that racetrack at 700 South Orange Blossom Trail. And feel free to tell Lieutenant Brick what I told you, okay? Okay. Okay. Good luck, sir. Make me mad when I was a state attorney. Don't ever make me mad. Okay. Good morning or good afternoon. This is is it Kersix? Did I say that properly? Okay, Miss Kersix, you're here on case number 2023 MM 2475AO. This is a trespass charge. I did review it. We can try to resolve it today, or I can set it off and let you bond out. Okay. Resolve it. Okay. And did she sign the plea form? Not yet, Your Honor, but it was an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, and no return to the Sheraton. So if you want to take it, you'll sign right there. Yep, right, yep where it says defendant. Okay, so Ms. Kersix, you did just sign the plea form. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that are on that form? The form that you signed? This form that you were reading as well, Eric. Any we need to make sure that you understand the information on the plea form for you to take a plea. So we're just talking to you up there. Did you have any questions? Okay. So she said you're going to enter a plea of no contest. Did anybody force you or threaten you to do that? No? And do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea today could subject you to deportation? Do you understand yes. that? Okay, so ma'am, I will go ahead and accept your plea. I will adjudicate you guilty. Um, I'm going to sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days that you previously served. I'll release you from this charge and this charge only. There are court costs. I'll give you a year to pay that back. And then I am also going to order that you not return back to that Sheraton. Okay, okay. good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, don't return back. The next case I have is Shanda Clarissa Montout. Okay. How about David Paul Murphy? Charlie's. Okay. Uh, next I have Shawnee, Shawnee Maxine Anacker. Hi, good morning. Are you, or good afternoon, are you Miss Anaker? Anaker, yes, ma'am. Anaker, thank you. And Miss Anaker, you're here on 2016 MM86AA. This looks like it was a KPS that was issued when you failed to appear for a status hearing on a petty theft charge. 
was there an offer or no? Yeah, did you want to try to resolve your case today or did you just want to bond out and, and talk to an attorney? Yeah, no, the resolve is going to be less than my bond, so I'll go ahead and resolve today. Uh, resolve. Okay. Um, you don't have an attorney. Did you want to have a chance to speak to an attorney or are you comfortable doing that on your own? I'm comfortable doing it on my own. Okay. Can you... The parameters of the case, there's no, there's no really reason for me to have one. Okay. And what the offer was... It's a withhold of adjudication, credit time served, no return to the Walmart, located at 1700 South Orange Blossom Trail. There's also a cost of investigation of $93 to the Apopka PD. And Your Honor, as a friend of the court, I do just want her to be aware that this is an enhanceable offense. Um, I don't think it'll affect her, though, because there's a... Oh, withhold. yes, it is a withhold. Sorry, Your Honor. Yeah. Yes. So I think oh, you're I fine. So, Ms. Anniker, I do have the plea form that you signed. Any questions about any of the rights that are on this form? Uh, no, ma'am. And uh, you are entering a plea of no contest. Did anybody force you or threaten you to do that today? Absolutely not, and I'm not under the influence. Okay. And <laughs> um, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then the deportation matters will not apply either. Absolutely. So at this time, I will withhold adjudication. I'll give... I, don't think it really matters how much time you have, but I'll sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days you previously served. I'll release you from this charge and this charge only. You're not to return back to that Walmart at 1700 South Orange Blossom Trail in Apopka. And then I will also note there's court costs and a cost of investigation to the Apopka Police Department in the amount of $93. Ms. Anniker, I'll give you a year to pay that back. If you need longer, you can always write to me and I'll extend it out for you. Just keep in mind if it's not paid off in a year, they'll try to suspend your driver's license. So am I leaving today? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Anthony is... Barrett. Sorry, I was looking at the handwriting on this page. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Barrett. You are here on case number 2023-MO4988. AO. It is a charge of disorderly conduct. Was that something that you wanted to try to resolve today or did yes. you? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And was the offer? Adjudication credit time, sir. Okay. S so, sir, the state's offer is an adjudication credit for time served, which I show is two days. And then based on that, I will take no action on the case that he's currently out on bond for in 2023 CF 1227 AO. So, Mr. Barrett, I do have the plea form that you signed. Any questions about the rights on here? Yes, signed. Do you have any questions? Oh, no, ma'am. Okay, and so we're going to enter a plea of no contest on your behalf. Has anybody forced you or threatened you to do that today? No, ma'am. And, sir, do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea today could subject you to deportation? Yes, I understand. Okay. Sir, I will accept your plea. I will adjudicate you guilty. I will sentence you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days that you've previously served. I'll release you from this charge and this charge only. There are court costs, but I'll go ahead and give you a year to pay that money back. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir, you're all set. Good luck to you. Go thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Thank you. The next case I had was, uh, Tim excuse me, Timothy Allen. Uh, then after him was Llewellyn Arrington. Then after that, I have Reginald Ayala. That's you. So, Mr. Ayala, you are here on a failure to appear for a DUI. So I do show that the Public Defender's Office had represented you previously. You do have a bond in the amount of $500, and this case is assigned to Division 84. So you can bond out with the $500 bond. If that becomes an issue for you, you can talk to your attorneys, and they can try to get you a bond hearing in front of Steve Jewett. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Take this with you. Contact our office. Stay in touch. Lamont Lacey Hughes. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Hughes. You're here on case number 2021 CT183AE. Um, 
this is, I don't know why Judge Bigney did this, but it's <laughs> when you fail to appear for a pretrial conference on a no valid driver's license charge, she set the bond at none. That being said, she also included an offer of an adjudication and credit for time served. Um, would you like to try to resolve the case today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's do that. So, um, let's see. I don't think he had an attorney previously, so I don't think that's an issue. But, Mr. Um, Hughes, you would be filling out the plea form. Did you have any questions about the rights that are on that form? No, ma'am, I read it. Okay. And I'm having you enter a plea of no contest. Did anybody force you or threaten you to do that today? No, ma'am. And, sir, do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea today could subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I'll accept your plea. I'll adjudicate you guilty. Um, I'm going to send you to two days in the Orange County Jail with credit for the two days that you previously served. I'll release you from this charge and this charge only. Those court costs of $306, I'll give you a year to pay that back. If you need longer, just let me know. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, you're welcome, you sir. Good luck day. to you. Good, one, good luck. Thank you. The defender was not um, for him, right? Correct. I didn't appoint him. Um, this would be Caleb Hummel. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Mr. Hummel, I have three cases here. Yes, let me start with the failures to appear. On case number 2021, CT2264AW, this was a capius that was issued when you failed to appear for an arraignment, um, and that was on a leaving the scene of an accident. What's in interesting is if you go to the court minutes, <laughs> the court minutes say ROR, but the capius says no bond. But let me ask you a question. Did you want to, um, well, let me... Go to the second one then. Let me see what that one was. That was a no valid driver's license. So I guess, Mr. Hummel, let me ask you a question. Do you want to try to bond out on these cases? I don't know that there's an offer for the petty theft. So that one, he, you're probably, did you make an offer on the petty theft charge? Um, I made an offer in all three, Your Honor. It's an adjudication of guilt, credit time served. And with regard to the petty theft, it's no return to the Hobby Lobby. Okay. So, Mr. Humble, you can resolve all these, or I can try to set bonds for you. What would you like to do? Uh, what would be easier? Because I want to do, like, what's easier. Your Honor, I, I think he may have some open juvenile cases as well. Yeah. I believe, Miss... Are you currently on probation in juvenile? No, I was on probation. I, did, I had to do 21 days, and then my mom kicked me out of the house. You don't have to talk too much about oh, sorry, any sorry. facts. Yeah, just in you case don't have to affects. tell me all that. I'm just... Yeah, yeah. I just don't want you to violate any probation. No, but if you open. have open cases, it might be better just to let you out and let you talk to a public defender. Do you want to have us appoint a public defender? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's go ahead on all three cases. I'll appoint the public defender's office. In case number 2021, CT2264AW, um, I'm going to go with what Judge Johnson originally <laughs> indicated, which is an ROR on the leaving the scene. And then in case number 2021-CT-2265-AW, that's the no valid driver's license charge. Uh, Judge Bigney set that bond at $2,000. And then in regards to the new law violation, 2023-MM-2489-AO, I'll stay the bond at $500 and order that you not return back to Hobby Lobby. Okay. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Uh, George Anthony Lee. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Lee. I have two cases that you're here for. Uh, the first case is a failure to appear warrant that was issued uh, in 2021, CT238AO. Uh, it's for a driving while license suspended or revoked, and it does have a bond of $750. And then the new law violation is 2023 MM 2495 AO, which is resisting without with a $500 bond. Are we going to try to resolve these or just let him bond out? I did want to clarify what the offer was for both cases. Yes. Okay. 
Um, you discussed that with Ms. George. Is that what you'd like to do with the adjudication of guilt credit for time served today? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you understand that driving while license suspended is an enhancement? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma for traffic offender? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, Your Honor, we'd like to resolve it today. I'm just adding the additional case number. We only had one written down. Okay. Can we confirm that the credit time served for both cases is going to be two days, or let us know what's different? So on the resisting, he would get one day, because it looks like he was arrested on April 13th. On the Dwillis, I would give him one day unless he was arrested previously. Let's just go for one day. I don't know that it really matters. Runs concurrently. Yeah, it'll run concurrently. So the only thing I wanted to make him aware of, um, Okay, so Mr. Lee, the only thing I was looking at is in regards to your driving record. If we adjudicate you to guilty today on the driving while license suspended or revoked charge, you've not had that charge since 2016. So this would be a first conviction towards the habitualization of your license, meaning as long as you don't get two more, they won't try to take your license for five years. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, yes, sir. So, sir, I do have a plea form as to both cases that you've signed. Did you have any questions about the rights on the form? And we're entering a plea of no contest on your behalf. Has anyone forced you or threatened you to enter a plea today? No, Your Honor. And, sir, you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, entering a plea today could subject you to deportation. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, sir, as to both cases, I will adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to one day in the Orange County Jail with credit for the one day you've previously served. We'll release you from both of these cases. Um, in these cases only, there are court costs that are associated for each case, but I will give you a year to pay that money back. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Tequila Sanders? Let me guess, she refused. <laughs> What'd you say? She bonded. Oh, she bonded? Oh, well, that's good. Um, Taylor Tapia? She also bonded. Okay, and then I have Dylan Michael Tracy? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. So I have Okay. So I have two cases. Um I guess the CT case did not get a case number because the clerk's office didn't receive the uniform traffic citation. So this is in regards to, sorry, agency case number 2322940 with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. That is a charge of driving while license suspended or revoked. I will find probable cause, appoint the public defender's office to represent you, and I'll stay the bond at $500. Now, because you are currently on probation out of Walton County, um, there is a violation of probation. That bond will be set at none. I'll temporarily appoint the public defender's office just to make sure um, they either come and pick you up. If they don't pick you up in a couple of days, you'll come back before me, and we can talk about either dismissing the charge or uh, getting you a bond. Yes. Re reporting in charge. Oh, and then you also have reporting instructions if you were to be released. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank right. you. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So your official attorney will get assigned to your case in a few days once they open it. So give them a call. Here it is. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. And this would be Res Wesley Bonilla Rosado. Okay. So let me just. Oh, 
There we go. Okay. Okay, so sir, I have you here on case number 2023 CF 4737 AO. It is a charge of possession of fentanyl. I do find that there's probable cause. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, what was the state's position in regards to the case that he's out on bond on? Your Honor, formal charges have been filed. He's set for pretrial May 23rd. Um, it's a drug case, Your Honor. Not really related, so either no action or revoke and double. Okay. So, Mr. Bonilla, what I'll do is um, it threw me off a little bit because the information listed uh, the co-defendant, which was the possession of meth, but your charge is only a burglary of a structure. Um, so I'll go ahead and save Mr. Lewinson some work. And in 2022, CF 8735AO, I'll take no action on that case, so you still can bond out. However, I am going to double the bond for the possession of fentanyl to $2,000, and then you can bond out on that. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Just 2000 on the new law offense, Your yes, Honor, to be clear. Thank you. So $2,000 bond on just this case, okay? Okay, the next case I have is Jermaine Butler. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Butler. You are here on two cases. Um, I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, let's do, okay, so on 2022 CF 9163AO, I'm appointing the public defender. This is fleeing and attempting to elude uh, Judge Beamer found probable cause. I will go ahead and set your bond in the amount of uh, $1,000. Then in regards to 2023 CF 4730AO, ah yes, this was the one where I reviewed the charging affidavit. I am finding probable cause. Um, is that first bond amount actually correct? Uh, I don't think so, Your Honor. I don't think so either. Um, I know it's fentanyl, but... Let me just double check. I know it's high. It would be 500,000. Yeah, it's I not think a it's... weapon with it, but uh, let me just double check. It's a million system. I'm sorry? It says million system. It does? I'll look for a warrant. Uh, yeah. If Judge Karsten had anything to do with it, he would make it that much. But let me see. Oh, yes, Your Honor, because it's more than 28 grams of fentanyl, it's a million-dollar bond. Okay. It did not, it, I questioned it, but at the same time, I also thought it, it is quite possible. So, um, Mr. Butler, I am going to set, keep the bond set at a million dollars on count one. I'll cut your break and, uh. Drop count two down to $25,000, and I'll count three at $100, and you're all set. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. $3,000 so she did. And, Your Honor, I, the next one, I know it's a warrant. However, there is a probable cause argument. There is a huge issue with the charge it came in under. It changes it from a second degree felony as it should be to a PBL. I don't understand what you're saying. It's, it's lewd act upon a child, 
and then it's yes your honor so the way it came in um looking at the statute so it came in as 800.04 uh, which requires um, penetration however based on the four corners of the report it should be under 800.052 um, which doesn't require penetration but does involve um, does it does appropriately reflect the situation in this case at least the alleged situation so my theory was actually reading the facts of the case because that's really what I'm more concerned about is that based on the facts of the case, he's entitled to a bond. However, if you're going to challenge the entire arrest warrant in itself and Judge Craner's ability to determine whether the facts met the right Florida state statute, I can hold him till tomorrow and see if I can get a hold of Judge Craner and let him know what he wants to do. Your Honor, if... Your Honor, if you're, Your Honor, if you believe based on the facts of the case to set a bond, um, that would be fine. We would just reserve our right to have any further Arthur hearing, as I do feel the charge came in inappropriately. But I do, um, Mr. Charles does wish to have a bond. Okay. I mean, I I read the charging affidavit and. I think it was set at IAs with the intent that usually when Craner writes it like that, that to me means he thought that he was going to get a bond and he's entitled to one. But because of the nature of the charges, I understand it just is coming. And I understand your office seems to be very hyper vigilant about the uh, the actual statute numbers. But I, I will tell you, if you get so caught up in the statute numbers that you look, you forget the bigger picture. Uh, your clients are going to suffer. But in this case, if you're allowing me to do that, Mr. Charles, I will go ahead, sir, and set your bond in the amount of $5,000. I am going to order that you have no contact with the alleged victim um, and actually any contact with anyone under the age of 18 years of age. Um, I did review the case in 2023, MM396AO. He's been out on bond for that since January. I don't see that the state has picked up the charges. And since there were no children involved, I'm inclined to take no action. And then that way he can bond out on the other case. Thank you, Your Honor. You. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Yes, mm -hmm. Take this with you. Um, Mr. Colvard? Yes. Okay. Mr. Colvard, how do you say your first name? John. Dijon? Okay. So, Mr. Colvard, you're here on case number 2023-CF4736-AO. Um, oops. And, Your Honor, defense would have an argument against probable cause on this one as well, if Your Honor is inclined. What's wrong with this one? Your Honor... In order for it to be a scheme to defraud, there has to be an ongoing course of conduct. Um, based on my reading, it seems like there were not, or there has to be like multiple ongoing courses of conduct. Um, based on my reading, it seems like this was one incident, um, and therefore it's not a scheme or an ongoing course of conduct. Did the state wish to be heard in regards to that? Your Honor, I believe there are actually two instances that are listed here. Um, he did this at a previous door, and then he went to this door and did the exact same thing, Your Honor. Um, Harris stated his manager then consulted with a Microsoft Teams message from another AT&T store, along with a screen grab of the surveillance cameras, Harris stated that he and Bear were also able to identify the mail from surveillance cameras grabbed from another store in Claremont who had a similar incident earlier today.
or did you want to respond in regards to that? I think that would be the continuing. It, I don't know that this, the fraud has to mean that each account is something that's included in the charging affidavit. It's the, the conduct is a continuation of behavior. Understood, Your Honor. Um, defense will withdraw their objection. We see where the argument can be made from the state side. Okay. So, Mr. Colvard, I will go ahead and um, keep your bond set at $2,000. I do have the Public Defender's Office now appointed to represent you. I am just going to order that you not return back to that AT&T store. Before I let you go, though, is it? I saw on here that um, you were just here visiting your girlfriend. Is it your intention to fly back to Michigan um, tomorrow? Okay. So I'll go ahead and include that I have no objection to him flying home so that he can get back home if you're able to bond out. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. I'm in touch with our office so you don't miss any future court dates. We don't want you getting picked up on the warrant over there and then transferred back to somewhere else. Okay, the next case I had was Heather Lorraine Daughtry. Daughtry refused. She refused. Okay. Um, I can appoint the public defender's office and we can waive her appearance or I can reset her. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we can appoint and waive their waive their appearance. Okay. So, in regards to Ms. Daughtry's case, that is 2023 CF 4752 AO. I did review the charging affidavit. I am finding that there's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent her. I am going to stay the bond. Um, well, actually, on. <laughs> Count one, I am finding probable cause, but I am going to release her on an ROR. As to count two, I'll set the bond at $1,000. Count three, $500. And count four will remain at $15,000. Okay, next I had Jose Rafael Diaz. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Diaz. I have you here on two cases. Um, I did review... Both of these, yes, these were both charging affidavits. Um, okay, that's why they were both charged that way. Okay, so... Um, We'll go with this one. The first one I'll go with is out of Division 12, 2023, CF 3304AO. Um, Judge Egan signed the warrant. I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. He did set your bond in the amount of $7,500 in order that you not return to the location where this event occurred, which I believe is the Lido Nails and Spa. The second case, uh, 2023 CF 4633AO is out of, oh, it's actually out of Division 12 as well. That's good. Um, that one was a warrant also signed by a judge. That looks like they set the bond at $10,000 and also agreed no contact with the victim and no return to the Jackson Hewitt store. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. I'll talk to your attorney to talk in more detail. Okay. I'll get everything. Next, I have Frederick Edward Dorr. Good afternoon, Mr. Dorr. You're here on case number 2023 CF4731. Uh, I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I am finding probable cause. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. I am going to stay the bond at $100,000 on count one. Count two is $1,000, and count three is $1,000. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. I'll talk to your attorney to talk in more detail, and you're going to go out that door, okay? The next case I have was uh, Raymond Harris. Um, so, Mr. Harris is here on case number 2023 CF4742AO. Um, it's a possession of methamphetamines. 
He is currently out on bond on two brand new cases. It looks like he just got out on the 27th. Uh, however, neither one has been filed on. They were for incidents alleged to have occurred on February 14th and February 17th. What I was inclined to do is go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent him. I am gonna set his bond at um, $5,000 on the new law violation out of Division 17. And then I will take no further action on the two cases that he's out on. He's actually out on ROR's on those. Understood, and um, we'll waive his appearance. Okay, thank you. The next case I had was Jonathan Victor Hernandez. Uh, on Mr. Hernandez's case, this is a little different. This is 2023-CF4688AO. I did review the charging affidavit. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent him. Um, I was going to appoint... Do you, actually, do you want to waive his appearance or do you want me to bring him tomorrow? Is your honor inclined to revoke his bond? Only because that one's been filed and it's very similar charges. It, your honor, if he refused, I don't know if he'll be in. Well, we can try one more time tomorrow and see if he's in a better mood. Um, I just like them to know when their bond's getting revoked as opposed to being shocked back there and not knowing what's going on. Sure, no worries. I'll go ahead and reset that case till tomorrow. And then I have Donald Allen Jenkins. Good afternoon. Are you Mr. Jenkins? No. Okay, sir, so you're here on case number 2023-CF-4696. No? Uh, I am finding that there's probable Your Honor, I apologize for interrupting. Uh, defense did have an argument against probable cause. Okay. And I do understand the state and potentially the court's position to argue for probable cause. However, um, the charge is an attempted burglary of an occupied dwelling. Uh, there is no clear evidence of an intent to commit a crime therein. I understand that there was the exposure of sexual organs. However, um, that happened prior to the attempt. Furthermore, he, there was nothing from his comments or statements that he was intending to do anything illegal. He believed that someone he knew was there, um, whether rightfully so or not, there was no actual intent to show that he intended to commit a crime therein. He thought he was meeting up with someone that he had previously had discussions with. Did the state wish to be heard? Your Honor, we don't know what the crime therein is because he wasn't able to get into the house. Um, the exposure of the genitals is not related to the burglary of a dwelling. The attempt is him shaking the door handle, um, saying that he was going to meet someone there, but it didn't make any sense. As he said, he's meeting a lady but couldn't articulate who the lady was and the uh, residents of the house didn't know him so the attempt burglary of a dwelling is attempting to get into a residence where he wasn't invited and they weren't opening the door but he was still shaking the door handle and your honor defense understands seats position however that would simply be a trespass of an occupied dwelling there has to be a, there has to be an intent to commit a crime therein for a burglary or an attempted burglary to happen and that's another element of the crime that needs to be there needs to be probable cause to support the crime otherwise the only crime supported is an attempted trespass of an occupied dwelling um Again, you guys are hyper-intensive on the statute. I find there's probable cause to hold him on two separate events. One, I, I technically think you could argue an attempted burglary, but I think you could also argue a trespass. Um, and then the second charge of exposure of sexual organs. Um, and Your Honor, defense has no issue with finding probable cause for the attempted trespass. Um, it's just the burglary that we're arguing against. Okay, but I'm still gonna keep the bond at 2,500 based on 
the actions. And so that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I can be hyper. We can change the statute. Do you know what the statute number is? I'm, do you have it readily? I think no, it's I 893. No, I don't. It's readily available. I don't. I will find it in a moment, Your Honor. Or I can bring him back tomorrow. We can get additional information. I can't wait till some of these judges get out here. Have you guys been doing this for a while now? You think I? I'm very patient. I got some judges that have the patience of a flea. And I apologize, Your Honor. I don't have the statutes readily available, but I am searching. I have trespass in. I think it's 810.09, but let me double check that. It's either 09 or 08, but I'm double checking. I have 08. Is trespass in a structure or conveyance just 810.08? I don't know that that's it though. Because um, it would be trespass in an occupied structure. How about that? Trespass in a dwelling is 810.08 sub or dash 12. How about that? And I apologize, that was what subsection or what section, Your Honor? 810.08. Dash 12. So I'll keep the bond state at 2,500 on count one, 500 on count two. I am going to order that he not have any contact with the alleged victims in this case, and he not return to the scene. And I don't have an affidavit of insolvency, but I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent him. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Good everything. I'm sorry. Trespass of a dwelling. That's for count one misdemeanor. Okay, good afternoon. Are you Leandre Kendred? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Kendred. Um, Oh, uh, Mr. Kindred, I remember you. Okay. So, Mr. Kindred, you're here on a new law violation in 2023 CF47508O. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. I'll go ahead and set your bond in the amount of $1,000. Uh, that being said, you're currently out on bond in case number 2023 CF1556AO. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defenders on that office because I don't think any, you don't have an attorney on that case. But based on the fleeing and attempting to elude, uh, I am going to go ahead and revoke your bond on that case, and the bond will be set at none. Uh, your attorneys can get you in front of Judge Navarro and see if she'll give you a bond hearing, okay? Good luck no, to you, sir. Thank no, you. No, I apologize. Can you give me the case number for the new law case again, please? Yes, ma'am. His new law violation is 2023 CF. Four seven five zero eight zero. Thank you. Um, Holly Major. Oh, sorry. What question do you have? You have a bond on the new one that you just got. That they revoked the old one. Okay, Miss. Are you Miss Major? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mim, you're here on two cases. Um, were you wanting to have the public defender's office appointed, or are you going to try to hire your own attorneys? Okay. Do you, um, they indicated on this paperwork that you get paid $2,000 every two weeks. That means you would be making $4,000 a month. That's probably more than the PD and the state in here make. 
so I don't know that you qualify for the public defender. Is that a is that the correct amount? That's after they take out taxes and everything. It is tips, so it kind of goes. It, it changes. Okay, so let me ask you on a how often do you work? Do you, would you say you work at least like five days a week yeah. in a week? Yeah. So don't give me your best week, but don't give me your worst week. What's kind of an average that you would be able to bring home? About fifteen. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars a week. Uh, um, a week. Uh, or are you saying about fifteen hundred dollars every two weeks? Yeah. Would she qualify that way? Mm. Okay. Okay. So I'll go ahead and take that into account. We will uh, appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, she does qualify for pretrial release, so I'm inclined to release her on pretrial release. Um, I don't really know that there's anything I would put as a condition of a release other than don't get arrested again. How about that? Okay. Um, I'm just kidding. That's sort of a, a standard one. But I'll go ahead and appoint the PD. You are going to be supervised by pretrial services and then just stay in contact with your attorney for both cases. Hopefully they'll put them together. I don't know why they split them up like that. You are not on the fleeing and attempting to loot. My paperwork doesn't have a bond. Right, because it's zero, because then she has to be seen by the IA judge, and then I give her a, a bond? Yes. So can I give her PTR? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no conditions. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, no conditions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll do PTR both on the resisting and the fling and attempting to elude, but no conditions. Okay? Okay. Thank you. If that's what you need, contact with them. Call our office in the next couple days to see who your attorney is, okay? Good luck. Okay. Sir, how do you say your last name? Good morning, Your Honor. McKet uh, McKetney. McKetney? That's the E is silent. Okay. So, Mr. McKetney, you're here on case number 2023 CF4747. Um, I am finding that there's probable cause. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. And that's right. On this case, I will go ahead and stay the bond at $15,000 on count one. I am finding probable cause on count two, but I will ROR you on that charge. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. And Your Honor, I do have um, a probable cause argument for Murphy. Yeah, on Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, you're here on 2023 CF475480. Um, I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office. I was reading through this. I think this again is one where, Your Honor, it doesn't even prove that he is a convicted felon as another issue if Your Honor um, isn't aware of that one. There's nothing that states he's a convicted felon or his convictions or any information about that. Your Honor, I agree that counts two through six do not have um, EC established. I would ask for the 24 hours, please, Your Honor. Okay. And then on the trafficking in cocaine with a firearm, that is a PBL, though. That is correct? It is um, a PBL, Your Honor, but it, there is also a bond amount on the bond schedule. Um, I think it would be 50000 but because of the firearm, it gets doubled to 100000 Okay. So why don't I do this, Mr. Murphy? I'll go ahead and um, instead of making count one a no bond, I am going to make it, um, you said $100,000? Yes, Your Honor. Um, but then I'll also give the state 24 hours. So if you want to wait and see um, tomorrow, at least the other charges might be get better in the sense that they may get ROR'd. So, um, but if you want to bond out, you're still more than welcome to do that. I'll go ahead and appoint the PD, and then um, I'll stay the bonds on the other cases, and then add the 100,000 on count one, but then I'll give the state 24 hours to follow up. Okay? And Good Your luck. Honor, were you, and you were ROing, RO, ROing on the ones previously stated by the state, or is everything just holding till tomorrow? I just wanted to clarify. I held. Held. I was going to hold it, because she has 24 hours to prove it up. 
Okay, I thought the ammu because I thought the ammunition issue that was brought up was because it was multiple charged. Um, that previous was brought. I thought that was a different issue than the conviction issue. It's okay. I can. I mean, I don't. We, we can. We can address it all tomorrow. I just thought that there was a, two issues going on. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yes. What's your question? And it's not about the facts of the case. And your honor, I don't know if we need to do this since a bomb was set, but just out of an abundance of caution, of caution, um, we'll reserve any right for further Arthur hearing. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Your Honor, um, mm -hmm. going back for Holly Major on the clean allusion. You're going to have to talk to your attorney about it. In there are two detail, different okay? cases there. Did you put it, any conditions for the resisting officer or violence? Either one? Mm -hmm. I have to note it for him because I can't do Okay, the next case I have is Israel Nieto. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. Nieto. Um, I know he wasn't interviewed. Would he qualify? Otherwise, I've got some information in there for him now, too. Also, because it looks like he went to safe books, so you guys didn't get to interview him. But it looks like he has a conviction for an out of state juvenile charge. But, um, his status is uh, going to qualify because of his status. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So, Mr. Nieto, um, you're here on case number 2023-CF4746-AO. 20, I'll go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stay the bond at $1,000, and you're all set. Okay? Good luck, sir. Thank you. Stay in touch with our office. Good luck. You're going to have to contact your attorney, and you'll talk in more detail. The next case I have is Ms. Roberts. Would you like me to appoint the PD and waive or bring her back tomorrow? Your Honor, I don't. This one should be fine to appoint and waive. Okay. So on case number 2023-CF4729-AO, 20, I'll go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office noting that they're willing to waive her appearance. I'll stay the bond at $1,000 on count one, 500 on count two, 500 on count three, and 500 on count four, in order that she not return to that location. The next case I have is Theodore Sherrod. Okay, so Mr. Sherrod is here on case number 2023-CF4564-AO. This is an arrest warrant signed by Judge Craner for a charge of possession of controlled substance. He did set his bond in the amount of $1,500. Um, I will go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent him. I did note that the arrest warrant is for issues that were or an incident that was alleged to have occurred on November 24th of 2022. Both of the cases that he's currently out on bond for are 2023 cases, so they would have come after this offense. So based on that, I will take no action on the cases he's out on bond. He should be honest. able to bond out. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to advise you not to talk on the record because anything you say can be and will be used and against you. I understand that, ma'am, but I just won't do it. I'm going to surgery. I have a kidney surgery. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I've advised Mr. Schrode um, not to speak on the record. However, he wishes to address the court um, as he believes this is an issue that can be resolved today. I've informed him it cannot. Um, and that an attorney will have to look into it further. I'm not sure how you think we could resolve it today, but I'll, I'll listen to you. Hey, ma'am, I'm just trying to figure out. I was told that this was on a case that I just got off of. I was just released on the 3rd of April. 
of, of these things. Now a warrant just pops up three days later. Um, the same officer. And I don't have the monies to, 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 to get out, but I was in, in process of getting my um, surgeries and I have a kidney issue that's going on. I'm, I'm not well. See, I still have the hospital band on my arm on one and the other one on the other from Osceola County. Supposedly something from November 2022 has been dropped. a different I don't have any. The only 2022 DF cases that I have. Yeah, but you have anybody else? It says I'm on guard on that. That, that case right there. That officer. Your Honor, I was. I, I think this was in conjunction with another case, and when he was searched, um, incident to arrest, the substance was on him, but they didn't test it at that time. They sent it to FDLE. And I believe it was just March 23rd is when the report came back, confirming that it's this substance. They're charging me with it twice. referencing yeah, I, I think what I'm seeing is that I found case number mm -hmm. yeah but they I don't 22 CF 136778L that does have an yeah. agency case number of 2022 um, and that shows an arrest on November 24th of 2022 and it's Say, looking at this further, he does have a, the 2022 CF 0136778O, and it does appear that one was only filed on for the possession of diamethylpenicillin. Um, and it does appear it is the same incident. I do see what he is talking about now. I do think it's possible it's the same incident, but it's not the same. It's no, no, no. It, I apologize, Your Honor. It is. If you look at 2022 CF 01377AO, um, back on 
March 20th, 2023, which might be one of the, no, it's not one of the Audubon's, um, back on March 20th, 2023, uh, it was filed on for the possession. Hold on. I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth between cases and pages. Um, we're looking at by Brandon Stahl, and it was in regards to a theft located at 5282 International Drive, 711. Mm -hmm. And that's the same in the 2022 case that has been filed on. She's correct, because if you read the, I think what happened, if I had to guess, is the FDLE report came into the state, and the state, for whatever reason, picked up the drug charge and let all the theft charges go, but never informed Officer Stahl, who then, once he got the FDLE report, he went and filed on the possession of the drug. And Your Honor, based on that, I understand that we can't get rid of the charges necessarily today, um, as that's something that'll have to be reviewed, but we'd be asking for ROR, as it does appear to be the same charge that he's already handling in another case. sort of explain why, I mean, when he was originally arrested in December, the drug charge in there was the drug paraphernalia. They also arrested him for theft and fraud. Yet the state still had an obligation to inquire on that. All they filed on was possession of control. Well, Laboratory. 
you have any indication why they brought this up, Sergeant? I do not, Your Honor. Um, it does appear to be the same drugs that have been charged twice. State has no objection to an ROR. Okay. Well, Mr. Sherrod, I'll go ahead. Um, I am going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you on the charge because the charge is not going to go away right now. Yes, ma'am. Um, but we'll go ahead and ROR you on that case and then talk to your attorney and, and maybe they can figure that all out. Yes, okay. Thank you okay. so much, ma'am. You're welcome. Good luck to you, sir. I'm going to let this attorney know sooner than later before they file charges. That's Sherrod. So on the original where, when I told him where he got a $1,500 bond or whatever it was that Craner gave him, I just reduced it to an ROR because it appears to be the exact same charge that he's already out on. Thank you. Okay. And then did we say Rachel Southland? She bonded, Your Honor. She bonded? Okay. How about Caleb Robert? Warkheiser? Yes, ma'am. Did I say your last name right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so, sir, you're here on two cases. Let me get in here real quick. Um, so, I have 2023 CF4721AO. Uh, this is a warrant that was signed by Judge Duckworth. If I am correct, because I read the actual charging affidavit, count one based on the age of the minor, should be, she's over 12, so he would be entitled to a bond, correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and I don't, I don't know why law enforcement's doing that that way, because it looks like they just sort of hack off half the other, you know, the more specifics of the charge and kind of give the general generic charge. Um, but he is entitled to a bond on that charge. Um, so I will go ahead. Um, I did review the charging affidavit. I'll appoint the public defender's office. I am going to set his bond in the amount of $5,000 on count one, $1,000 on count two, $1,000 on count three, $1,000 on count four, and $500 on count five. I am going to order that you have no contact with the victim or any uh, anyone under the age of 18. Now, because you are currently on probation out of Seminole County for a very similar offense, um, that bond is going to be set at none, and I will temporarily appoint the public defender's office to represent you to see what Seminole County is going to do. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Victor Austin Weeby. Uh, Ellis White. Okay, good afternoon, Mr. White. You're here on case number 2023 CF4734. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. Um, were you wanting me to appoint the public defender's office to represent you? Are you going to hire your own attorney? Public defender. Public defender? Okay. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender to uh, represent you. I am going to stay the bond at $1,000. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Um, and then this would be Mr. Wright. Okay. Mr. Wright, I have you here on case number 2023 CF4743AO. Um, I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, I did want to see one. Thing. 
So you do qualify for pretrial release. Um, would you would you like to get out so that you don't have to pay a monetary bond, but you would be supervised by pretrial services? Yes. Okay. So the only thing that I would order, though, is that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Do you have any other weapons or firearms at home? Um, yeah. I mean, how would that work out? I'm sorry? Like, would, I lo would I be losing my concealed carry license or? No. Well, technically, when you got arrested on this, it would have revoked it the concealed carry permit. Um, but then the minute the charges, if as long as you don't get charged as a convicted felon, and if you were to resolve the cases, um, like they may charge it something differently, like as a misdemeanor. No, you're not. Lo you're not losing your right to have a concealed weapons permit. Plus, I don't know. Come July, I don't really know that you're going to need it. Because I think the governor was making it go away. Just in case. I'm no, no, no. I, I'm with you. I got mine, too. So um, the only other thing is I can set your bond. I would lower it down to $1,000 if you'd rather just get out on a straight bond. No weapons or firearms. And he has a concealed weapons permit. It's just spent. It's expired, suspended, something. They're going to do a resolution. The case, well, first of all, they have to wait to see a filing decision. Then from there, you'll get court dates. Um, so it could take a minute. Uh, in some cases, resolve quickly, some cases take too much time. Pre-trial release? Okay. Your Honor, um, he's fine with the pre-trial release. Okay. So, sir, I'll just release you on pre-trial release. Again, the only um, conditions would be that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Um, if you have any additional weapons, you would just need to turn those in to law enforcement or maybe give them to a family member or a friend. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I believe that was everything for this afternoon. Uh, we will be adjourned till tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Wendy Eugene on behalf of the State Attorney's Office. Stephanie Fritchell with the Public Defender's Office. Uh, Jeff Youngblood with Pretrial Services. Okay. Thank you. And I believe we're starting with William Shoemaker. Okay. his wife here. to his wife. Do you know who spoke to his wife? Because at the bottom it says that they made contact with her and that she couldn't come to court because of her physical condition. Okay. So, so we're going to talk about that right now. So hang tight and then we'll figure out. We'll, see, we'll hang on one second and we'll figure just wondered out. If it said via the telephone they communicated. Right. So I was just wondering if... Um, she made any statements about she's okay with him coming home or because if he has no place else to go <laughs> they didn't elaborate at the okay do you guys have a phone number for her yes do you know what it is four seven uh huh two seven three Okay, good morning, Mr. Shoemaker. Um, I know that your wife had spoken to pretrial services and said that she was not going to be able to come here today because of her 
um, medical condition, but said that I could contact her. I thought maybe that would be something I could do since um, he does qualify for pretrial release. And I just need to know, because it doesn't look like he has any place else to go if he doesn't go back home. So I kind of like to get that information from her. And we would appreciate that, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Shoemaker does have a lot of medical issues and medications, and we do want to make sure he has a place to go, especially if no hostile contact is an option. Okay. Let me see. I guess, does my phone work? How about, can, can you call that phone number and have her go over the thing? Your Honor? Yeah. The number that you were given is the home number, but that's the home number for Mr. Shoemaker. If you look on the um, witness uh, form, it's a different number. It's 4965 is what is listed for the victim. So it, it may just, if one doesn't work, you can try an alternate. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's the one they gave to us on the victim card. Now, that's what how they saying. got a hold of it, found that. But it is the same number. Hi, good morning. Hi. Is this Joy Shoemaker? Yes, it is. Ms. Shoemaker, my name is Martha Adams. I'm the judge that's presiding over initial appearances, and your husband obviously had been arrested. I had seen that when pretrial services reached out to contact you, that you had indicated you wouldn't be able to come to court. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I had your preferences and and sort of so my goal is I have to get your husband out of jail he's entitled to get out of jail but I need to do so so that it's safe for both you and him that being said normally in these types of situations I issue no contact orders meaning that he would not be able to see you or call you or anything and that would mean he would have to live someplace else obviously that being said, was that something that you're in agreement with, or were you wanting him to come home and just not have any hostile contact with you? So no fighting and no arguing. Okay. I guess I can do the word there's no fighting or arguing. Well, what do you feel safe with? I, I certainly understand you and your husband have been married for 55 years. That's wonderful. I know that marriage is very difficult, and it certainly gets even more difficult the older you get. Um, if your husband were to come home, do you think that you would feel safe with him being there? I, I, I've never been alone before. <laughs> I went from marriage, I went from my parents' house to hit, to marry him. I... I don't think I can make it on my own. I don't know what what to do. Okay. Well, um, I understand that that's a that's a hard hard position that you're in because you feel like you need him, um, and I I know that the officers had indicated there had been a lot of. Um, arguing and bickering going on, and I'm sure it doesn't help if you both have medical issues that are causing problems as well. My only thought is that um, if he does come home and I issue a no hostile contact, that means that you would not, he can not yell at you, fight with you, scream at you, um, and hopefully uh, maybe you could try to work through this, but I, you know, I'm not a therapist, and I, I know this is a delicate situation. I'm just more concerned about both of you being safe. So I understand that you, you say you need him to come home, but 
if he comes home, are you going to be okay if I just issue the no hostile contact? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you want to try to ask her any other way? I don't. I, I only have one question. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Should something like this happen again, would you be comfortable calling law enforcement? You mean calling the police? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, I could. I, I have no issues. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Shoemaker, you're here on case number 2023-MM2483AO. You do qualify for pretrial services. Um, that means I could release you so that you don't have to pay a monetary amount to get out of jail. Um, with your wife's consent, the only condition would be that you have no hostile contact with each other. Um, and I know I'm probably being a lot more nosy than I should be, but I do see that you, you were in the military and obviously you have VA benefits, correct? Well, I was also going to suggest maybe just some counseling. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you, 55 years, that's an amazing amount of time to be together. Um, but I can tell you I'm 52, my husband's 51, and we've only been married for, well, it was 18 years, but we've been together for 22 years. It gets harder and harder every day. And sometimes just having a third person to kind of talk things out. You what? You you don't want to do that? No, Your Honor. He no, Your Honor. He made another comment. He's not saying he doesn't want to do that. That wasn't his comment. He said he's not the aggressor. Okay, and I understand, but that's what I'm saying. Sometimes maybe a third party can sort of point that out and let somebody see that. It's just a thought. Um, I just. I hate to see 55 years of marriage fall apart at this point. So, sir, I will go ahead and release you on that PTR with the no hostile contact with your wife. And then um, just stay in contact with your attorney. I am appointing the public defender's office. And then Mrs. Shoemaker, um, the state attorney's office will reach out to you later, probably through the mail. And, and talk to you about this case. But please, like I said, there's a no hostile contact in order. Um, you're always more than welcome to call law enforcement if you don't feel safe, okay? Okay, so is he coming back here? Yes, ma'am. He's able to come home to you. Um, he may choose to do something different, um, but, but he is able to come home if he would like. Okay. And, Your Honor... Um, since there's no hostile contact, he just wants to inform his wife that if um, she can make a phone call to assist picking him up. Yeah, I think he may need your help in picking him up. I don't, um, does she, do you guys use like Uber or? Lawrence. Lars. Lawrence. Lawrence. Um, she'll have to call her. Yes, I've been advised that she'll have to call Lawrence to assist. Okay, so Mr. Shoemaker, maybe if you could call Lawrence, he can help get your husband home, okay? Okay, but I don't know when. Is he coming home now? Or? Um, yes, ma'am. He should be able to get out in a couple hours, um, maybe like one or two. So if you talk to Lawrence, they um, Lawrence can always call the jail and find out when, when to pick him up. But it'll be shortly. Okay. Okay, I'll call Lawrence, and hopefully he's there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, good luck to you both. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Sorry, You'll contact our office to talk to the Did we figure it out? Yes, we did. Okay, perfect.
we didn't need to bring him back. No, we didn't. Perfect. Thank you. Already did. Hey, good morning, sir. Are you Clarence Richard Bradwell? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bradwell, you're here on case number 2023 CF271280. That is a warrant that was signed by Judge Allen. She was the one who determined that there was probable cause. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, I am going to keep your bond set at 5000 on count one. On count two, I'll set a $100 bond. Count three is $500. I'm also going to order that you not return to the scene, that you have no contact with the victim, that you not possess any weapons or firearms, and if you have any weapons or firearms, you need to surrender them to law enforcement. Now, the no contact order that you just signed is just you acknowledging that you've been made aware of the no contact order. It's not necessarily something that's permanent, but the only person that would be able to change that is the trial judge. So in this case, that would be Judge Harris. So just make sure if you think that um, you want to see the victim or the victim wants to see you, that you get with your public defender so they can get you back in front of Judge Harris to change that. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Was the reset canceled? Um, Jonah Travick Harris was that canceled? They figured it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we figured we figured out which one which count had the ROR. Um, and this is Christopher James Farrell. Are you Mr. Farrell? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, sir, you're here on 2023 CF. 2248AO. Uh, I did review the arrest warrant that was signed by Judge Jansevich. She did mm. determine there was probable cause. I will go ahead and appoint the public Honor, defender's office to represent you. I apologize. I know there's already been a probable cause determination and the court may be hesitant to disturb it. Um, defense just w does want to briefly argue um, lack of probable cause for the strangulation, um, if Your Honor is willing to hear it. Um, I don't know uh, what authority do I have to deter to question Judge Jansevich's finding determining probable cause because she understood your honor um just for the record then we'd just be objecting to lack of probable cause for the strangulation um we understand there's information that may lead to believing that she was unable to breathe at the time. However, there's something that clearly states that, and that's why we're objecting. Okay. Did the state wish to be heard? For the record, it says that she almost lost consciousness. I believe that would be sufficient to indicate there was strangulation. In any case, um, I am going to go ahead and set bonds. He is entitled to bonds. Uh, the bond will be $2,000 on count one, $150 on count two, $100 on count three, and $100 on count four. I am going to order that he have no contact with the victim. Um, uh, Your Honor, I do apologize. 2150 100 and I missed one. 2150 100 and 100 Thank you, Your Honor. So no contact with the victim. He needs to maintain a separate residence. Mr. Farrell, um, obviously this was an incident that was from January 18th. Without telling me anything about the facts of the case, do you and Ms. Greaves still live together? Do you need to get some belongings from her home? No, ma'am. No? Okay. So I'll just put the no contact order, maintain separate residence, and you are not to possess any weapons or firearms. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. You 
Okay, good morning, sir. Are you Juan Terrell Jackson? Yes. Okay. Mr. Jackson, you're here on case number 2023-CF46948. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. Um, I'm finding probable cause for a charge of battery by strangulation. I don't really have much information about how it's domestic violence related, but I don't necessarily know that that makes a difference to him being able to get a bond or not. Um, he does say uh, it's the baby's father, Your Honor. Oh, did I miss that? Um, second page, oh, first line. I highlighted it. I just didn't write it back down again, so I apologize. Okay, so Mr. Jackson, um, I am going to give you a bond. The bond will be $1,000. I am going to order that you not have any contact um, with Ms. Harris and that you maintain a separate residence from her, that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, good morning, sir. You are Robert Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Kennedy, you're here on case number 2023 CF. 4702AO. I did review the charging affidavit. I am finding probable cause and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. I believe in the box this would be Vanessa Caban. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Caban, can I get you to raise your right hand for me? Do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So, Ms. Caban, it's my understanding that you and the defendant have recently broken up uh, less than a week ago, um, and then this incident occurred. Normally, I do issue no contact orders between the two of you so that I can try to keep you safe. Are you in agreement with that, or did... Your Honor, I'll waive his appearance. Okay. So, Ms. Caban, were you wanting to have contact with him, or did you yeah. want to have a no contact order? Um, my thing is, I had a psychosis episode yesterday. I suffer from a lot of mental disorders, mental health disorders, and I went a little overboard with my medication and drinking yesterday because I lost my job, which, you know, it set me off in a frenzy thing, which caused this whole thing to happen. Okay. So, and, and I understand that, you know, things going on in your life can certainly cause problems when they're you're in a relationship yeah we're homeless and we live together in my car and some friends in the hotel so we help each other out with maintaining a room and then i lost my job and so because of my anxiety and my depression i took i'm only supposed to be on like one one two milligram one and a half milligrams of clonopin I had five and a half milligrams of clonopin yesterday, 50 milligrams of Soloft. I had a 99 and I smoked. Okay. So I wasn't all there when this whole situation went down. Okay. Bye. Well, let me ask you a question because I, I obviously want to make sure that you're safe, but I also want to make sure, do you have anybody? I know that since you're not really, you don't have a permanent residence, um, do you have a doctor that prescribes your medications? Yeah, I called my psychiatrist, so they're going to adjust my medication, but I can't get an appointment until the 28th. The 28th of April? Yeah, but she's going to try to fit me in sometime this week. Okay, okay. And and you'll make sure that you call them if you have any more incidents where you're feeling upset? Yeah, I, I tried calling, but the psychiatrist is normally only there Tuesday to Fridays. So sometimes I call in the middle, or I'll email in the middle of the night and stuff like that when I'm, like, losing it. It's just hard because he's okay. my support system, and look what I did because I snapped, and I can't really remember much of yesterday. I understand. I understand. So are you telling me that normally Mr. Kennedy is very supportive of you with your medications and stuff? He tries to make sure that I'm on, I'm on point with it, and then I've been... Ever since I lost my job, like, I've been a little, like, all over the place, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I'll do, ma'am, is I'll go ahead. Um, 
I'll set his bond at $1,000 on count one, $100 on count two. I'm just gonna order that he not have any hostile contact with you and that he not possess any weapons or firearms. He doesn't. Okay, so um, just if you wanna, I, I got a question. He seems a little upset, but I think he'll calm down, yeah, he's, um, especially if he can get out. But um, I got a question for count two of the, um, um, what is it, the withholding? It's just that I didn't realize that my my child safety was on in the back seat door, so that's why I couldn't get out the car. Okay. It wasn't so much that, so I don't know why he's being, I tried to tell that to the officer. I didn't, it, There was no need. He didn't keep me there. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as it is. The no hostile contact will remain in place. Just make sure that you talk, keep talking to your doctors, and, um, and good luck to both of you, okay? But I can go bail him out, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you let him know if he'll release his property because he has the card so I can go across the street? Yeah, they'll, they'll talk to you if you want to talk to the COs, okay? Okay, yeah. good luck. Thank you. Did you let him know what was going on? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. He, it, okay. Um, and this is Angel Limehouse, correct? Yes. Miss Limehouse, you are here on case number 2023-CF28228-0. Um, I did re review the affidavit that Judge Allen had found probable cause on. Um, So she does qualify for pretrial release. Does the state have any objection to me putting her on pretrial release? No objection, Your Honor. Okay. So, ma'am, I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, you do qualify for pretrial release, which would allow you to be released without having to pay a monetary bond. Um, the only conditions that I am going to impose are that you not have any contact with Mr. Humphreys at this time. I know this incident occurred back on March 1st, and I don't want you to tell me anything about the, the facts of the case, but the way I was reading the paperwork, it doesn't seem like you're living together right now, correct? No. Do you have any belongings at his house that you need? No. Okay. So the no contact order remains in effect. The only person that can change that is the trial judge. So if you think that you want to have contact with Mr. Humphreys or you even think Mr. Humphreys wants to have contact with you, just realize you're the one that runs the risk of going back to jail for violating that order. So just get with your attorney to get you back in front of the trial judge. Um, the only other conditions I will impose are to maintain a separate residence, no weapons, no firearms, and um, abide by any plans that DCF may put into place. Okay? Um, Depending on how the case is tried. You're not convicted, nothing has happened yet. Any other questions? Okay, next I have Kyle Rampersod. Okay, 
he's on a capius, so there's not much I can do. He already has the PD. Do you want me to waive his appearance? Yes, Your Honor, as long as um, the PD is appointed, we'll waive his appearance. Yeah, I think you were originally appointed on the case, so this was when he failed to appear for a status hearing. It looks like they issued a no bond on the capius for all the charges, so he would have to get back in front of um, whoever's covering 23 right now. Okay, good luck. Um, David Washington? Did we skip one, Your Honor? Sorry, we have Dion Walker. Oh, I just have them out of order. No worries. And I do have a probable cause argument for Dion Walker. You think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor. I was hoping maybe someone had more information than I did, and it was a mistake. This is the exact same deputy that did this before. Probably. Uh, if I can have 24 hours, please, Your Honor. Yeah. I what I can do is... Um, I can go ahead and give him a bond, but I'll give the state 24 hours, and that way if he wants to bond out, he can bond out, but if he wants to wait and see if the state can get the information. So, Mr. Walker, I'll give you a bond this morning of um, $2,500, but I do have to impose a no-contact order between you and the victim. Um, and Your Honor, if there's no PC, with the no-contact order stain? But that's what I'm saying. So, Understood. So, Mr. Walker, this is what I'm doing. For, for purposes, if you want to get out today and you want to post a bond, I'll give you a $2,500 bond, but the conditions are you're not to have any contact with her, you have to maintain a separate residence from her, and you don't possess any weapons or firearms. That being said, I'm giving the state 24 hours, so they'll come back tomorrow. If they can prove the charge, nothing will change, but if they can't prove the charge, then you might get out on an ROR without having those conditions apply. So does that make sense? If not, I can break it down. A moment, Your Honor. Sure. So. All right, thank you, Your Honor, for that moment. Thank you. All right, possibly see you tomorrow. Thanks. You're welcome, sir. David Washington? Okay. Um, Your Honor, I did just have a PC argument for the DV relation on this one. Yeah, and that was my only thing that I was going to tell you is that I just have that the victim, I don't see that there's an issue that there's a battery. I just wasn't sure what the relationship was, but I don't know that that necessarily, all that did was hold him he here on a no bond, but I'll give him a bond. But then again, he was going to get held anyway because he was out. out Understood, Your Honor. It could just affect certain conditions of release is all. Absolutely. So um, do you want me to waive his appearance today or do you want him to come back tomorrow? Your Honor, um, we're fine with waiving his appearance if the bond is set and if, um, yeah, you're fine. We're fine with waiving his appearance, Your Honor. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I meant to, and I didn't look up um, the felony that he's out on bond for. 
2023 CF 1337AO. He, he was arrested January 30th. Formal charges have not been filed. Okay. So here's what, I, here's what I'd be willing to do then. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent him. I'll set the bond at $500 on count one, and I'll set the bond at $1,000 on count two. I am going to order a no contact between he and the victim, but that would be standard anyway. Um, no weapons, no firearms, and I will also... Um, Put that I'm taking no action for the case that he's currently out on bond for. Thank you, Your so Honor. So that way he can bond out if he would like. <coughs> and I'm shocked that the cameras at the courthouse actually worked. <laughs> Very unusual. Okay. And then, so I am assuming that this will be Gregory Winston Allen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um... Mr. Allen, you are here on case number 2023 MM245880. I did review the charging affidavit and I am finding there's probable cause. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, it's my understanding that the victim in this case is your wife, and this is Sherelle Robinson Allen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can I get you to raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that you'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, ma'am, you've heard sort of what we're doing here this morning. I normally issue no contact orders between uh, the victims and the defendant. Are you in agreement with that, or would you like to have contact? No, I'm not in agreement with that. I didn't want him to get arrested in the beginning. It was just a misunderstanding. So, I know, I guess the officers were irritated at one point because he was, you know, pretty hostile with the officers. So they were uh, a bit irritated with him. So I believe that's why they took him to jail. He wasn't being violent or anything like that towards me. It was just a misunderstanding okay. as far as, cause he took my phone and and that was it. For, but as far as, you know, him being violent or hitting me or anything like that, it was nothing of that. Okay. Um, well, he does qualify for pretrial release, so what I can do is that way you don't have to pay any money to get out of jail. I'll just have you supervised by pretrial services. The only condition of your release will be that you have no hostile contact with your wife. I just also ask that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Yes, okay. Um, did you have anything further you wanted to let me know? No, that's it. Okay. You should be able to pick him up soon then, okay? Good luck to you both. Thank you. Yes. And this would be Tracy uh, Germain. Hi, good morning, Ms. Germain. You are here on case number 2023-MM2484-AO. Um, I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I am finding that there's probable cause, and I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, So <laughs> I read the charging affidavit. Um, I, I certainly understand your frustration. My concern today is I can let you out on pretrial release so that you don't have to get out with a monetary bond. But without your brother being here this morning, I do have to issue a no contact order between the two of you. Do you have someplace else that you can stay until maybe we get this sorted out a little bit down the road? Yeah, I talked to my mother last night about the possibilities of that, and she said she'd be working on um, somewhere temporary okay. for the time being. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll release you on pretrial release with the no contact order. The no contact order is not necessarily permanent, but the only person that can change that order is Judge McGinnis. So if your mom comes to you and says, hey, your brother is really sorry and wants to make up, I understand that that makes it better for you, but the only person that can change that no contact order is Judge McGinnis. So you just want to get your attorney to get you guys back in front of him so that he can change that for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I am going to put that you're to maintain a separate residence. Uh, if you do need to retrieve any belongings from your home, I'll allow you to do so one time with law enforcement officers. Um, and then I'm just going to order that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. in the next couple of days to see who your attorney is. Stay in touch with your police officer directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have time visit with no firearms. firearms. Because you don't have a pre trial no firearms. That's in lieu of paying the money. So just stay in touch with me. Um, okay. Just do an email. Okay. okay. Yeah, it'll take a few hours to process the email, but then yes. Mm -hmm. Good luck with everything. Thank you. Okay, next I have Issa Jafar. Hi, good morning, Mr. Jafar. You're here on case number 2023-MM242AW. I did read the charging affidavit. I'm finding probable cause, and I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, you do qualify for pretrial release, so I'll go ahead and release you so that you don't have to pay a monetary bond to get out on release. Um, but however, I do have to issue a no contact order between you and your brother-in-law. So the piece of paper that the officer put in front of you, that's just the order you signing it, indicating that you're aware that, that you're not to have any contact with him. Now, I certainly understand, um, the dynamics of the family and everything that's going on. That no contact order is not necessarily permanent. Um, but the only person that can change it is Judge McGinnis, the trial judge. So if your family thinks that your brother-in-law, you know, wants you to come home and everything will be okay, um, that's great. But you need to make sure you get that order changed with Judge McGinnis or you run the risk of going back to jail. So obviously that does mean you're going to need to maintain a separate residence from him. Do you have someplace else you can stay just for a little bit? I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Okay. Um, do you think you and your wife could possibly stay in a hotel until you can get back in front of Judge McGinnis or something different happens? Um, I can try. It'll be difficult, but I can't, I can't say yes. Okay. Well, I, you're going to have to try to find something. Otherwise, they're not going to let you out of jail because you're going to have to try to find someplace else to live. So I'll include the maintain a separate residence. Obviously, if you need to go back and get any belongings, um, you can do so with law enforcement officers one time. And I'm also going to order that you not possess any weapons or firearms. If you run into a huge amount of problems, make sure you contact your public defenders so that they can try to get you back in front of Judge McGinnis sooner as well. Okay. Pre-trial release, that means so instead of in of posting a monetary bond, you're going to need a pre-trial release. You're going to have an officer you're going to have to report to, and they're going to want to know where you're living and things like that, which is how the judge is at. Okay? I can't really um, settle the uh, contact with those people. Don't, when, don't, talk, don't contact the judge. Contact your attorney <coughs> and the pre-trial release officer, okay? And they'll, they'll explain it to you back there. They're going to help you out. Okay. Yeah, someone talks to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Okay, and this is Cecil Filbert. And Your Honor, I believe. Yeah, unless I was I'm wrong. Ask if Ms. Reese can yes, come. Thank I you. just needed to make sure that that was Mr. Filbert. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you Mr. Filbert? Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, good morning. Uh, this is Cecil Filbert. Mr. Filbert, you have case number 2023 MM2488 AO. And then Ms. Reese, you're here on case number 2023 MM2487AO. Since um, the two of you are considered defendants and victims of each other, 
Um, it's a little unusual that I bring you in the courtroom together, but I figured this would be a little bit easier since you're both here. Um, normally in these types of cases, I do issue a no contact order. My question is, do you guys want to continue to have no contact with each other or would you rather to be able to have contact, I would issue a no hostile contact, which means no fighting and no arguing or anything like that. Ms. Reese, I'll start with you. Did you want to have contact with him? Or are you good with the no contact order? I'm good with contact. With contact? No. Your Honor, she wishes to have no hostile contact. No hostile contact. OK. And Mr. Filbert, what about you? Are you OK with the no hostile? Yes, ma'am. OK. So um, let's do Ms. Reese first. Um, she does qualify for pretrial release. So, Ms. Reese, I can go ahead and release you on pretrial services supervision so that you don't have to post a monetary bond to get out of jail. Um, the only condition that I'll have is that you have no hostile contact with Mr. Filbert and that you not possess any weapons or firearms. And if I didn't say it previously, I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, Mr. Filbert, you don't qualify for pretrial release but I will go ahead and set your bond in the amount of $250 um, with the no hostile contact and no weapons and no firearms. And again, the public defender's office has been appointed. Do either of you have any questions? No. Any questions? No? Okay, you're both free to go. Thank you. Instead of a monetary amount, your officer will explain it's going to modify for them, stay in contact with them, and contact them. Uh, Pre-trial release, what's the specific reason that Mr. Filbert doesn't qualify? I apologize. Javon Redmond. Hi, Mr. Redmond. Um, you are here on case number 2023-MM174AA. Um, I did review the charging affidavit in this case, and I am finding that there's probable cause. Um, I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Um, So I will go ahead and set your bond in the amount of $500. Um, I do have to issue a no contact order um, between you and Ms. Glover. That being said, um, if she wants that to change or you want that to change, it's not necessarily something that's permanent in the sense that um, you can change it, but the only person that can do that is Judge McGinnis. That's the trial judge. So if you do want to have contact with her, or she thinks she'd like to have contact with you, um, make sure you get that changed in front of Judge McGinnis. Otherwise, you run the risk of being brought back to jail with no bond for violating that condition. Um, now, I know that you had been at the hotel, so I got the impression you clearly kind of moved out at least for a night. Where are you, do you have all your things, or do you still have things at your home with her? Uh, yeah, so I still have things in my house. Okay. So just for right now, obviously, because of the no contact order, you're going to continue to maintain a separate residence. If you need to go back and get any items from your home, I'll certainly allow you to do that one time with law enforcement officers, and I'm just going to order that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Okay. okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Um, so I got to pay the whole 500 to get out? I'll let her, I, I, I'm not going to contact the bondsman, take the bondsman, and help you out. They'll do 10%, but they won't do less than 100. 
and I don't know how to do it on lower comms, but you can contact the bondsman if um, 100 would be the least you pay if they would be willing to help you out with this one otherwise. Um, uh, I have $100 on me, like on my card. Contact, contact the bondsman, and they'll, they'll have more information on how to fill that out. Okay. Good luck with everything. There's no contact means no contact. Call law enforcement before you return. No contact means no contact, and call non emergency law enforcement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before you go. Okay. Okay, and this is Joseph Waskin. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Waskin, you're here on case number 2023 MM 2493AO. I did review the charging affidavit. I'm finding probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. It's my understanding this would be Kalina, is it Barbero? Kalina Barbero. Okay. And ma'am, can I get you to raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. So ma'am, um, normally in these cases, I do issue a no contact order between you and the defendant. By you being here today, are you wanting to have contact with him, or are you okay with the no contact order? I'd like to have contact. I'm sorry? I'd like to have contact with him, yes. You do want to have contact with him? Okay. Um, and I, so it wasn't, he wasn't interviewed, but. He refused to he, speak to PTR when they tried to, we don't, mm -hmm. we don't have a risk assessment on him or any information. Okay. Um, He should qualify. So let's do this. So Mr. Waskin, just so you know, the people that were coming to talk to you, they, they weren't being annoying. They were actually trying to help you get out of jail. So I, didn't, I, didn't. I understand. It's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that you can either bond out with $500 in bond or pretrial release if you qualify. The only way for them to figure out if you qualify is you have to talk to them. Um, but Regardless, you should be able to get out either way. The only conditions that I will impose are that you have no hostile contact with her and that you not possess any weapons or firearms. Okay. 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 Good luck to both of you. Thank you. No hostile contact is on you. So if anything escalates, you have to be the one to walk away and de-escalate it, okay? If everything helps, thank you. And the PD was appointed, right, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. If I didn't say it, I meant to. Okay. Next, I have Alec Aaron... Hankus? Hankus? I didn't read this. Sorry. Okay. Um, good morning, sir. You're Alec. Is it Hank House? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Hank House, you're here on a case that um, will go to Seminole County? It will go to Seminole County? Yeah. I don't know why he brought me to Orange County. I was... Yeah. I would assume because where he found you... Hold on one second. Well, yeah, it was because... Don't, you don't have to say anything. Just in case. Okay. In any case, um, you're 
Your Honor, so it's just weird. I don't understand. Is this the appropriate place to make PC arguments? I'm sorry. I thought this was an out-of-county warrant. It only I seemed, did too. That's why I didn't I'm a little need it. confused. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, exactly. And, I, and what I don't understand is that when you look at all the information, it says the address of the arrest was at the 2961 Brantley Hills Court in Longwood, Florida. The only thing I can assume, and I don't expect Alec to tell me unless he'd like to tell you, is it says, after observing Alec throw the knife, she observed him gather his things and dog while shouting that he does not care about the cops coming or anything. So I could assume that he left the home and somehow they found him later. But if you read the charging affidavit, it indicates that they arrested him at the home in Longwood. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know why they brought him here then. And it's weird because for a domestic case, I mean, normally we would tell the victim to come. I'm sure nobody's contacted his family at all. Our officer didn't do the uh, risk assessment with it, and it said stated over the line arrest, and so they just put it as out of Right. Um, I mean, I can give him a bond, and then I could reset him to tomorrow if we wanted to get some additional information. Um, it, Your Honor, we would be asking for that at this time. Just we don't want him to be held no bond in custody if it is appropriately to be heard in Orange County, and vice versa. We don't want him to be held no bond here if he's not going to be transported. Um, would be a, our concern at this time. Your Honor, just so I can do the appropriate research, can you give me the case number that both of you are referring to? Because I don't have it on my paperwork. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, I don't think it even Actually, has it. all I have is an agency case number for the Seminole County Sheriff's Department. Okay. This is, that's why I'm this is insane. This is all I have. And I don't even know. Have you ever seen this before? No. Okay. Did you need those on email? Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Hankhouse, with only answering me with a yes or no, would you agree that you were you arrested at 2961 Brantley Hills Court? No. No? Okay. So there's definitely some paperwork that's missing, or some at least a, a sentence or two. But so in my experience, if you had a DUI that started in Osceola County, and then he got here as an over the line case, he would get a bond because the bond would be the appropriate amount for what Orange County has, and then they would just take the case back to Seminole or to Osceola County. So in this case, if it's a Seminole County case, but he gets arrested over the line, I still think he should be entitled to a bond, and then they would take him back to Seminole. And I don't mean take you back physically. I mean the case would go back to Seminole. So it would ultimately be in Seminole County, but the problem is we just didn't go through the process we normally go of doing what we need to do to, to release you. Um, what I could do is give him a temporary bond so that if he wants to bond out, he can, but then also ask the state if she could maybe check with the Seminole County Sheriff's Office to find out um, how it is that he came to us and then kind of go from there. I think that would be appropriate, Your Honor, if we can set a bond today um, and reset this just to see if we get any other information and if he bonds out in the meanwhile, he bonds out in the meanwhile. Okay. And so, Alec, your biggest, the biggest issue that we're going to have today, if you, if you want to bond out, is that I have to issue a no contact order between you and your family. Yeah. And that's because of the way the citation, the charging affidavit is written. Um, and so Joseph is your brother, correct? He hates me for some reason. Well, but that's okay. Brothers kind of hate each other sometimes. But he is your brother, though, right? 
and you're 27, and he is much younger. 19, and he thinks he can. Just, I got you. Casey, say too much. I was the little sister, so I would probably be the brat that you're referring to in that situation. So I get it. But so here's the thing. So normally we would allow your brother to come and tell me if he wanted you to come home or whatever. And usually your parents would have probably dragged him in here and said, yes, tell him that you want to come home. So I'll go ahead and set your bond at $3,500 on count one, $100 on count two with the no contact order. Obviously, that means you're going to have to live someplace else from your brother at this time. Um, but what I'll do is just put maintain separate residence. So if your parents kick your brother out, you can stay at home. If they kick you out, then, yeah, you got it. Um, and then no weapons or firearms. And I don't know if they're going to let me stay home. And if you need any belongings, I'll allow you to go one time with law enforcement officers to retrieve those belongings. But I'll also note that we'll reset this tomorrow if you don't get out of jail so that if your family, if you contact your family and tell them what's going on, they can come tomorrow if they would like. Okay, thank you. And because of the uniqueness of this case, can we have the public defender's office temporarily appointed? Yeah, I'll temporarily appoint the PD's so office. So that means he can, my family can show up tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yes. Insane. Or you can bond out today. I, okay. But just keep in mind, if you bond out today, <laughs> those that no contact order remains in effect. So you may want to decide what's more important to you. Do you want to get out today and not have any contact with your brother? Or well, I don't, I don't know if my parents are going to bomb me out regardless. And you don't have to answer that. Or the, on the alternative, you can stay one more day and see if your family will come and let you get out with having contact with them. So that's the distinction. You can, if you can bond, you can bond yes. out, um, but the no contact order stays in place. Yes, if you out. We're going to come back tomorrow so we can find out more information. And if your brother does show up and says he wants contact or anything like that, then you can have him. If you want to call your family. I just don't understand why this is there. It shouldn't be. And, Miss Eugene, if you need any assistance in getting a hold of Seminole County, just let me know. I'll try to, I can get my JA to try to help you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You don't need She loves to investigate and hunt things down, so. Thank you so much, Judge. You're welcome. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. You'll be bonded out, okay? Good luck. You're going to go that way. Okay. Um, next, I have Robert Linares. Did I say your last name properly? Okay. So, sir, you're here on a warrant out of Polk County. Uh, this is in regards to a violation of probation. The bond has been set at none. So, Polk will have um, 24 hours to come and pick you up, okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. The only thing is, is that since it's Polk County, she can't touch it. So the, you, Polk County is going to have to come pick you up. So if they don't pick me up? If, uh, if they don't pick you up, you'll be back in here, yes. and we'll be addressing that, okay? Like, like tomorrow? They have 72 hours, I believe. Okay. okay. Good luck with everything. You're going to go that way. Okay, the next case I have is Demetrius Boney. Good after, good morning, Mr. Boney. You are here on a violation of probation in case number 2008-CF4016-BO. I will go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. This BOP warrant was set at no bond, so you do need to get back in front of the trial judge to see if they'll give you a bond hearing. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, he has reporting instructions. Okay, and you do have reporting instructions if you are released. Okay, good luck, sir. Thank you. The next case I have is Emmanuel Charles. Mr. Charles, you're here on case number 2022-CF841AO. I will go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. This is a warrant for a violation of probation. Judge Strobridge has set your bond at none, so you do need to get back in front of her if you want a bond hearing. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Next, I have Sean Bradley Goodwin. Yes, Mr. Goodwin, you're here on case number 2020-CF8546AO. I will go ahead and appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. 
This is a VOP warrant that was signed by Judge Weiss. Uh, he has set your bond at none, so you do need to get with your attorney to get back in front of Judge Weiss for him to change that if you to do something different. Okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Anthony Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, you're here on 2020 CF 14652AO. I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Uh, this violation of probation was signed by Judge Harris. She did set your bond at none, so you do need to get back in front of her for a bond hearing if you want that changed, okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. The next case I have is Jamin Johnson. Mr. Johnson, you're here on case number 2022-CF2383AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Uh, Judge Brownlee did sign the VOP warrant. She has set your bond at none, so you do need to get back in front of her if you want to have that changed, okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Hey, good morning, sir. Are you Roger Todd Marsh? Yes, I am. Okay, Mr. Marsh, you're here on 2022 CF 10161AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to uh, represent you. This is a VOP warrant signed by Judge Strobridge. She has set your bond at none. You do need to get back in front of her if you want that bond to change, okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. I'll see if I have any, if I can send them an email, okay? Is it a private attorney? I'll be able to find it then. Okay, the next case I have is Carl Nolan. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Nolan, you're here on 2022 CF 2555AO. Uh, I will go ahead and appoint the uh, public defender's office to represent you. Judge Blackman signed the VOP warrant for this. He has set your bond at none. That does mean that you need to get in front of him if you want to change that bond. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, and I don't know who has the case just yet. And the PD was appointed on that one, correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma okay, and sir, you are Julius Ramdial? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir, you're here on 2020 CF 13497AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. This is a VOP warrant. Uh, Judge Blackman set your bond at none, so you do need to get back in front of him if you want that bond to change, okay? Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Good after or good morning, sir. You're Mr. Robinson. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. You're here on 2022 MM 4749 AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. This is a warrant that was signed for a VOP. It does set your bond at none. It's in Division 50, so you would need to get back in front of Judge McGinnis if you want that warrant to or that bond to change. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have. Mm -hmm. No, you're fine. Darlene Romero. Yes, ma'am. Miss Romero, you're here on 2021 CF 2362 AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. This is a violation of uh, probation signed by Judge Brownlee. She set your bond at none, so she's the only one that can change that amount, okay? Uh, Lisa Ann Sloan. Good morning, Ms. Sloan. You're here on 2022 CF 7382AO. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. 
This is a violation of probation signed by Judge Navarro. She did set your bond at none, and she would have to be the one to change that bond amount. Okay? Good luck to you, ma'am. Your Honor, I do have um, an objection to probable cause on the next one for the violation of probation. Okay. This is Robert Terrell Smith. Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Smith is here on ah, two cases. Yes. Bless you. So let's look at the the misdemeanor uh, is 2023 MM 2494A0, a charge of petty theft. Um, Did you have a PC issue with the charge itself or the VOP? With the VOP, Your Honor, they just say that he's on probation. They don't actually state a case or where. I tried to look in Orange County. I can't find anything. I can't confirm that he is actually on probation to violate his probation. Oh, I um, have it. Okay. I have it. So let me just do this, though. So for the petty theft charge, I am finding probable cause, and I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent him. I'll keep the bond set at $250. Um, I'm just going to order that he not return to the St. Regis Apartments. Now, in regards to the violation of probation, um, we were able to determine he is on active felony probation in case number 2020 CF 10341A0. It looks like he's on probation until November 30th of 2024. And it looks like that was in regards to four counts of burglary of a structure. And, Your Honor, I do trust the court. I do just want to see it with my own eyes for one. Sure, absolutely. I apologize. He has yeah. reporting instructions. And he has reporting instructions. Okay. Twenty twenty CF. One zero three four one. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. So, sir, that I will appoint the PD on the VOP. The VOP does have a, a no bond, but that's in front of Division Twenty Two. So, get with your attorney, and they can try to get you a bond hearing. Okay. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it looks like the next case I have is Jaheim McLean. Are you Mr. McLean? No. Okay. Sir, so this is a violation of probation in case number 2021 MM 257 AE. I will go ahead and appoint the public defender's office to represent you. This was a warrant that was signed by Judge Allen for the VOP. She did give you a bond in the amount of $2,500. There is also another case, 2023 MM 281AO. That is out of Division 61. It was a failure to appear for an arraignment. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender's office if they were not previously appointed. That also has a bond, and that bond amount is $500. Okay, good luck to you, sir. Thank you. And then this should be William... Is it Shrimplin? That's correct, Judge. Okay. Your Honor, I, I, had, I came across an issue on this one. I don't know if it would be something we can address today or probable cause exactly. Um, but there's a chance that the violation was filed after probation ended. Well, and I think he could have argued that and have standing to argue that had he actually appeared at the violation of probation. <laughs> um, that's the problem. It's a capious. Oh, of I apologize. I misread that. Yeah, it's a KPS out of Division 62, and so it was a failure to appear for a VOP. Runner. Even if it was a failure to appear, if the violation was filed after probation, we'd still be arguing for lack of probable cause, and I'll just confirm what I saw earlier was correct, but that would be the defense's argument at this time. 
That's a defense, Your Honor. That's not probable cause. Understood, and it might be something um, better handled later, Your Honor, but I did wish to point it out as I don't see how you can hold someone for a violation if they aren't on probation any further. Just so the court is aware of what defense is seeing, um, what the defense saw was that he pled to 364 days of probation on 321.16. And on 321.17, a notice to appear for violation was filed. Uh, Your Honor, I don't, I would assume that since that's a, in exactly a year, that's over the 364. And that would be the issue, Your Honor, and that's why that would be a probable cause argument. Sorry, Your Honor. Part of my problem is, uh, for whatever reason, this computer is not letting me see all of the pages of the court minutes. Understood. And I do have, I believe I might have printed some of them, Your Honor. I can see what I have. Oh. My concern is, though, without probation here, I mean, technically it gets into whether or not, because they have, they can file it on the very last day. As long as the judge signs it on the last day, then it's considered valid. Understood. But considering that it's 364 days, and that's exactly a year from when he was placed on probation, the argument is that they didn't sign it on the last day. They signed it after probation ran, meaning there's no probable cause to hold him on a violation as he was not on probation at the time they filed it. Your Honor, if I'm looking at the same thing, the plea agreement form was filed was signed 321? Correct. Right, but there was a notice of noncompliance that was filed on 4-4 of 2016 indicating that he had not impounded his vehicle. So within weeks of him being on probation, he had already violated. And Your Honor, I do see where that was filed. However, it was not filed as a formal violation, and they had a whole 11 months after that to do such, and yet they waited until probation was over. Your Honor, I'm also looking at the notice of violation. Um, that was signed by the officer on 3-3, and it was filed March 21st. Well, my, here's my concern in regards to all of this. I, I don't think I have the ability to set aside a capius that's been signed by a judge 
I understand it, it would be no different than arguing I didn't really fail to appear. It was a mistake. You should have never done it, and I get that, but that's something that has to be taken up with the trial judge. So I think the problem is he's going to have to talk to uh, Division 62 is now judge. I don't remember. But I, I just don't think there's anything I can do. In your honor, I completely, completely understand the court's position. Um, just from our standpoint, we believe that there is lack of probable cause to hold him for the VOP, so we'll just object from that standpoint. Okay. It's Judge Duckworth that has Division 62 now. Um, he can certainly get in front of him. I certainly think one could argue that when he failed to appear for the notice to appear, that um, that caused some problems too. Um, I find it hard to believe that when he got placed on probation back in 2016, he didn't know that he hadn't done things, but I'll leave that up to probation and Judge Duckworth. I, I will appoint the public defender's office, and they can try to get in front of Judge Duckworth this, by tomorrow, even if they'd like. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I do have 33. Oh, I started to check that in the trash. That's not good. I have the 33 day motions. Um, we'll start with Tony Smith, 23CF3235 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Next, I have Joselito Martinez Gonzalez, 23CF2958 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Andrew Justin Gonzalez, 23CF1195 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Andrew Justin Gonzalez, 23CF3171 AO. Uh, sorry, they put those. They didn't put those for me. Which number was this one? Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. What was the second number that you said? Uh, I had a second case for Andrew Justin Gonzalez, 2023CF3171 AO. One moment, you're on. What? Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Should I be worried that thing keeps flashing red? It goes red to green to red to green. They'll call me if they can. Granted, notice of non filing. Granted, notice of non filing. Thank yes, you, ma'am. Uh, the next case I had was Logan Clayton Voles, 23 CF 3033AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Alicia Rochelle Davis, 23MM1558 AO. Granted, case was no build. Oliver Lee Barconi Jr., 23CF2536 AO. Denied, information was filed. Olivia J. Connolly, 23CF2884 AO. Granted, case was no build. Jeremy W. Phillips, 23MM165 AW. Granted, notice of non filing. Lakita LaShawn Harris, 23CF2464 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Philip Edward Hudson, 23CF3309 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Dionisia Perez Guzman, 23CF1057 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. J. Daniel Franklin, 23CF1286 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Jessica Lynn Jones, 22CF14199 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Angel Antonio Centeno, 23CF1329 AO. Granted, notice of non filing. Laketa LaShawn Harris, 23CF1136 AO. Granted, case was no build. Okay, that was everything that I had for this morning. Uh, it is now 11.01. What time would you guys like to come back for the second session? Your Honor, defense would request 1 p.m. if possible. I did not receive the dockets as early as I usually do this morning and ran into a little trouble. Okay. Stay, Avenue. At least 1 p.m. You good with 1? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, corrections? 
Everybody's good with one o'clock? Okay, we'll come back at one o'clock then. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? All right, thank you. You were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right. Um, you are here on a warrant for failure to appear out of Osceola County on failure to appear for an arraignment on a charge of possession of methamphetamine. The public defender has been appointed to represent you for the purposes of this first, amend, uh, first appearance hearing. Uh, the court that issued the warrant has already determined that you willfully and knowingly failed to appear for court for arraignment. Uh, there is no bond on that warrant. Um, did the defense wish? Did the defense wish to be heard? Okay. Uh, you all have the opportunity to discuss that with the court that issued the warrant for your failure to appear. You'll be held pending hearing in that division. Thank you. Next court date, April 18th in courtroom 5S at 8.15 a.m. Next case is the state of Florida versus Jamia Little, 2020 CF 3263. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and date of birth for me? Jamia Little, 914-1992. Thank you, Ms. Little. You were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes. All right. Um, you were arrested on a warrant for violation of probation. You were on probation for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and it's alleged you violated your probation by failing to live without violating the law by testing positive for illegal narcotics or drugs on March 10th of 2023. You've sought appointment of the public defender, and the public defender has been appointed for the purposes of this first appearance hearing. Uh, probable cause to believe you violated the conditions of your probation was determined by the court that issued that warrant. Uh, there is no bond on the warrant, um, and you're not legally entitled to a bond by virtue of a criminal history that indicates that you're qualified as a violent felony offender of special concern. Uh, so uh, the defendant will be held no bond pending further proceedings before the court that issued the warrant. Thank you. Have a good day. Next court date, April 18th, in Court 5S at 8.15 a.m. The next case is the state of Florida versus Michael Leonard Williams, 2019 CF 1549. Did appointed? Good afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth? Michael Williams, F1282. All right, thank you, Mr. Williams. You were shown a video before I called your case advising you of your constitutional rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right, um, then you have been arrested and are here for first appearance on a warrant for violation of probation. You were on probation for possession of a controlled substance and it's alleged that you violated the probation by failing to pay the cost of supervision, failing to undergo, undergo a substance abuse evaluation and failing to complete community service hours. Public defender has been appointed in your case to represent you for today's first appearance. Court that issued that warrant has determined there is probable cause to believe that you violated the conditions of your probation. There is no bond on the warrant by the issuing magistrate, so the court will take no action on that bond, on the no bond status, and you'll be held pending further proceedings before the sentencing court. All right? Have a good day. All the probation and the 80 hours of community service. Failing to pay cost, are you asking what, what the allegations are with respect to your violation of probation? Everything was needed. Okay, well you'll have the opportunity to discuss that with both your attorney and the court that issued the warrant for the viol violation of probation, all right? All right, thank you. I'm sorry? Next court date, April 18th, in court room 4F at 8.30 a.m. Thank you, sir. That's all. The next case is the state of Florida versus Matthew Charles Zimber, 2021 CF 2538. No application for this defendant. Sir, would you please state your name and date of birth? Matthew Zimmer, October 5th, 1989. All right, Mr. Zimmer. Um, there was a video that was shown to you before I called your case advising you of your rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, yes sir. All right. Um, you have not filled out an application for appointment of the public defender. Are you legally able to afford counsel? Yes, sir. 
Judge, right. I do see that um, Ernie Mullins filed a motion yesterday for a uh, motion to amend the probation order and motion to set bond. However, he hasn't filed a motion. He did file a motion. Okay. His attorney of record is Ernie Mullins. All right, you have an attorney in this case. Uh, that attorney is not here today. I could continue this hearing until tomorrow in order to give your attorney the opportunity to appear um, on your behalf, or I could appoint the public defender's office just for the purposes of this first appearance hearing. Um, I don't know that it will make much of a difference. You've been arrested on a warrant for a violation of probation. It's alleged for you were on probation for unlawful possession, and it's been alleged that you violated the curfew provisions of your probation. Um, the court that issued that warrant has determined that there's probable cause to believe that you violated the conditions of your probation, namely, again, the curfew provision. There is no bond on that warrant. Uh, so I'll take no uh, action on the no bond status on the warrant, and you'll be held f pending further proceedings before the court that sentenced you to probation. And it sounds like Mr. Mullins has already filed that motion and is seeking a hearing on that. All right? Okay. All right. Thank you. That is all. Next court date, April 18th, in courtroom 5F at 815 a.m. The next case is the State of Florida versus Gerald Hurley, 2023 CF1076. Morning or afternoon, sir. Could you please state your name and date of birth? Gerald William Hurley, Jesus, All right, thank you, Mr. Hurley. You were shown a video prior to my calling your case advising you of the rights that you have. Did you hear that or view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right. You were arrested on an affidavit out of Osceola County on charges of possession of fentanyl and possession of drug paraphernalia. You've sought appointment of the public defender's office to represent you for the purposes of this first appearance hearing, and I'll appoint the public defender. Um, Ms. Catano, um, did the defense wish to be heard as to either probable cause or bond? All right, the court that issued that warrant previously found probable cause to believe you committed the offenses of possession of fentanyl and possession of drug paraphernalia, and I've reviewed the affidavit for arrest warrant and will also find that there's probable cause as to those charges. Um, bond has been set in the warrant in the amount of $1,000 as to count one and $500 as to count two, um, and the court will stay the bond in those amounts. Next court date. Next court date on demand. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I was already sentenced to so five years in the uh, PSC custody, and it's possible to get all our arts on the other prison, and it's just not the main. Can I come back for the court date? Is that why here to go to court? I mean, I understand the implications of your being held on this while you've been sentenced to DOC, but. Um, I can't get, I'm not going to grant that relief today. You can take that up with the judge that issued the warrant. And um, I mean, I would imagine that would result in a plea, possibly, and then you could go to DOC to complete that sentence. All right, but we're not gonna do that today. Thank you. The next case is Arajo, State of Florida versus Araujo, 2023 CF 1083. Kitty appointed. Good morning, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and date of birth? Reynaldo Araujo, March 13th, Thank you, Mr. Araujo. You were shown a video before I called your case which described the constitutional rights that you have. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right. You were arrested on a charge of burglary of an unoccupied dwelling. You yes, have... Excuse me, Go ahead. Public defender has been appointed to represent you. Uh, Ms. Catano, you can proceed. Um, yes, Your Honor. There's no facts in the four corners of the affidavit to indicate any um, crime was committed other than a trespass or no intention, just a trespass, What says the state? Yes, Your Honor. I believe there's probable cause in this case. Uh, the defendant was observing video coming into the 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 uh, dwelling uh, without permission, and also he was wearing uh, a glove and was looking through the uh, bedroom of the owner of the home, and 
there were uh, missing objects and missing items from this house. We believe that's sufficient uh, to show that there's probable cause in this case, Your Honor. All right, in the four corners of the charging affidavit, there's allegations that the defendant had a glove on his hand. He was seen, quote, searching an area, close quote, where money had previously gone missing. And the footage viewed appeared to show uh, what the law enforcement officer characterized as the defendant hiding when he noticed uh, that, the, that there was a camera in the room. From those facts, the court, um, there's a reasonable inference to be made that he entered the party with the intent to commit a, entered the property with the intent to commit a crime once in there accordingly the court will find that over the defense's objection there is probable cause to believe that the defendant committed the offense of burglary of an unoccupied dwelling what says the defense with respect to bond objection? Um, Your Honor, uh, we will ask to leave the bond as it is right now. Um, this is a felony case. Uh, we also will ask um, PTR if there's any uh, history of crime in this case. They can provide that. Your Honor, we can't. We can't hear him over here in the jail. Yeah, if you can move that a little closer. I'm sure. You can remain seated. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was explaining, Your Honor, that the state will ask for the bond to, be, to remain at 5,000. Um, this is a felony case, and uh, we were also, we were asking the court to uh, ask PDR to provide the history, if they have that information. Ms. Jenkins, do you have anything? Yes, sir. I'm between 2003-2008, um, petty theft, no valid driving license, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, aggravated battery, aggravated assault, contempt of court, and failure to appear in VOP, um, that was in two, all the all way up to 2009. 1998, um, out of Washington, D.C., possession of marijuana and probably being deported um, for um, immigration status. But he's um, legal now in 2006 out of North Carolina DUI. Anything else, Mr. Dominguez? No, Judge, we just will ask the court to um, keep the, the bond as it is right now. The bond will be set as to the sole charge in the amount of $1,000 with the defendant to be supervised by pretrial release. Anything else on the case, Ms. Catena? No, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being on demand. Yes. The next case is the state of Florida versus Michelle Bruner, 2023 CF1082. 
Katie appointed? All right. Uh, Ms. Bruner, would you please state your name and date of birth? All right, you were shown a video before I called your case, which explained the constitutional rights that you have today. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? All right. Uh, you were arrested on charges of burglary of an unoccupied dwelling, theft of utilities, criminal mischief, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, Ms. Cateno, uh, two. Yes, go ahead. Uh, the challenges that I have are for count one and count three, Your Honor. Um, burglary, again, there's no facts to indicate any offense other than. Other than not other offense other than trespass was committed by this defendant, or nor did she intend to do anything illegal. Um, as far as the criminal mischief, there are no facts to show that the broken glass was caused by Ms. Brewer. No one saw anything, no one heard anything. There was broken glass, and it really had nothing to do with my client. State response? Yes, Judge. The uh, requirement in count one is that the state prove that the defendant had intent to commit a crime therein and that uh, the Your Honor can rely on the nature of the defendant's entrance. We see here that the uh, opening to the home is a crashed sliding glass door in the back of the house as well as uh, boards that were actually ripped off of this house. Um, the defendant was in there, according to the photos, for, I believe, four days prior to being caught. She does appear to have been um, attempting to hide herself in there. When she was confronted by law enforcement, she claimed to have a, a lease that she was never able to show um, existed. And finally, Judge, there, there's also an extension cord that is going into the house, which is the theft of utilities. Um, so not only did she clearly have the intent to commit a crime therein, but that she also did in, uh, commit a crime therein by taking that extension cord inside the house and stealing utilities from the uh, owner of the home. Do you want to talk to your client, Ms. Cateno? Those are, I mean, those, I guess, don't really speak to probable cause. I think the fact of the extension cord uh, permits an inference of intent to commit the crime of theft of utilities and the fact of the damage to the property, which would have provided access to the premises, provides probable cause for the charge of criminal mischief. So the court will find probable cause as to each of the offenses based on a review of the charging affidavit. Um, Ms. Cateno, can you speak to Bond? Um, yes, Your Honor. I, I know she doesn't uh, qualify for pre-trial release for, for some reasons. Um, but the court will find probable cause for each of the offenses based on a review of the charging affidavit. Your Honor, I know she doesn't uh, qualify for pre-trial release for, for some reasons. But um, I, I would say $1,000, Your Honor. State? Could be here from PTR on any history. <laughs> From 1991 to 1992, shoplifting, possession of marijuana. From 97 to 2002, possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia, criminal mischief, BOP, resisting officer without violence, failure to appear. From 2003 to 2005, false ID to Leo, possession of marijuana, robbery, burglary with assault, PT, um, petty theft, um, contempt of court. 2011 to 2017, driving while license suspended, false ID to Leo, grand theft, VOP, no vehicle registration, um, 328, 2018, dwellers, 717, 2018, dwellers, possession of marijuana, possession of drug paraphernalia, 12, 27, 2020, dwellers, and 5, 15, 2022, possession of drug paraphernalia, and she have a warrant out of state of Georgia. 
Judge, based on that history and the facts of this case, the defendant has a history of committing crimes of dishonesty, giving false identification to law enforcement officers. Um, we'd ask that the bonds remain as set and that any conditions of bond include no contact, or sorry, no return to the scene of the offense. All right. Based on the facts and circumstances of this case, the court will set bond in the amount of $1,000 as to the charge of burglary of an unoccupied dwelling, $100 as to theft of utilities, $100 as to criminal mischief, and $150 with respect to possession of drug paraphernalia. The non-monetary conditions of the defendant's release will include no return to the scene of the alleged offense. And while on release, the defendant will not possess or consume drugs or controlled substances without a prescription. Anything else, Ms. Catano? Nothing for the defense. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Next court date on demand. The next case is the State of Florida versus Jeremy Castillo, 2023 MM830. PD appointed. Good afternoon. Could you please state your name and date of birth, sir? Jeremy Castillo, September 1st, 1993. Thank you. Uh, before I called your case, you were shown a video explaining your constitutional rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, yes sir. Um, all right. Thank you. You were here for first appearance on a single charge of misdemeanor domestic violence battery. You've sought appointment of the public defender, and the public defender is appointed to represent you. Um, any argument as to probable cause, Ms. Catano? No, no. All right, the court has reviewed the charging affidavit in your case and will find there is probable cause to believe that you committed the criminal offense of misdemeanor battery. Uh, we will uh, consider bond and the conditions of release. Um, Ma'am, could you please identify yourself? Eliana Rosa. Rosa? Eliana Rosa, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll hear from Ms. Rosa. Uh, Ms. Catano? Um, your Honor, is for repeating testimony? Well, I was going to hear your request first, and then I'll um, take for her bond. testimony into consideration. For or bond, for bond, Your Honor? Yes. Um, I would request $100 in bond, Your Honor, um, with a pretrial release for the defendant. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
has alcohol always been involved? And do you know what kind of drugs he's using? There's a microphone in front of you, so do your best to Cocaine speak Cocaine and pills. It. And do you know if he has any mental health issues? Yes. Um, judge, I don't have any further questions. I'll just ask that P PTR put a full record of the history of the defendant. Did you have any questions, Ms. Catano? No, Your Honor, no questions. Ms. Rosa, you used the term no hostile contact, which suggests to me that you've got some familiarity with the, the, the notion of mm -hmm. putting conditions on a de criminal defendant's release. In the prior instances of alleged domestic violence against you by Mr. Castillo, has he been released on no, ho no hostile contact conditions before? One time. All right. Did he ever violate those conditions? I don't think he did. I don't remember. All right. Ms. Jenkins, I interrupted you. From 2011 to 2016, um, GT of a dwelling, dealing in stolen property, burglary of an unoccupied dwelling, uh, possession of burglary tools, um, trespassing, fade to appear. Um, 2018, battery DV out of Hillsborough County, possession of marijuana. 2018, again, um, out of Hillsborough County, battery DV. Um, he was on VOP. He had a VOP. Um, I guess he was on probation then, on probation. 9-2020, battery DV out of Osceola County. 10-2020, criminal mischief, violation of the method injunction. I'm um, 421, 2021 battery DV. For um, for 2021 violation of um, the missing injunction. 2022 battery. It doesn't say whether it was um, domestic violence or not. And 6 2022 battery on a Leo. 6 2022 battery. It doesn't say whether it was some um, battery DV. And also 11 2022 battery and trespass. Ms. Catano, did you wish to be heard any further? No, Your Honor. State? Just based on that, Judge, we'd ask for a $2,500 bond, that there be no contact between the defendant and the victim, uh, that they maintain separate residences, and that while on bond, the defendant not have, um, not possess any alcohol or uh, any drugs without a prescription, and no weapons or firearms. That's all from the state. I want to make sure I understand you correctly, Ms. Rosa, because the charging affidavit that I reviewed indicated or identified you as Mr. Castillo's live-in girlfriend. Did you at some period in time live with him? Off and on throughout the years. But right now, where do you live? No. He, where, where do you live? I mean, don't give me the address, but you have your own apartment or home? I live with my mom. Thank you. All right, bond will be set on the sole charge of misdemeanor battery in the amount of $1,000 uh, with um, pretrial release. Non-monetary conditions of the defendant's release are that he have no contact with Ms. Rosa, and um, they'll be required to maintain separate res residences during the pendency of this case. The defendant, while on release, shall not possess or consume alcohol or controlled substances without a prescription and shall not possess weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Ms. Rosa, I know you requested no hostile contact. That's not what I'm ordering here today, um, but the judge that is assigned to um, this case can consider any motions uh, that the defense may file to modify those conditions of release. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Won't you do that as a matter of course? Do you, does PTR do random your analysis as a matter of course? Yes, sir. Okay. If you order it, we can um, do it. I'll order it. Next court date on demand. Your Honor, do you want both alcohol and um, drugs? Yes, please. Okay.
right. That concludes your first appearance, Mr. Castillo. Thank you. The next case is the State of Florida versus Jenna Seto, 2023 CF1083. No application to this attendant. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you please state your name and date of birth for the record? All right, thank you. Before I called your case, you were shown a video explaining to you your constitutional rights. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes. All right. Um, did she complete an affidavit? She did. Okay. Ms. Seto, are you able to afford the services of a lawyer to represent you? I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent Ms. Seto for the purposes of this first appearance hearing. Um, Ms. Seto, you are charged with possession of synthetic cannabinoids and possession of drug paraphernalia. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. Any argument as to probable cause, Ms. Catano? No, Your Honor. Court will find that there is probable cause uh, based on the arrest report filed by the Florida Highway Patrol. Count one is listed. Well, Ms. Katana, did you wish to be heard as the bond? Yes, Your Honor. These are non violent drug charges, and Ms. Seto is not qualified for direct PTR as the defense would request. Any objection, State? No objection, Your Honor. All right. Court will grant that request and release Ms. Seto for pretrial release without bond. Next hearing date. Next court date on demand. The next case is 2023 MM838, State of Florida versus Max Colgate. Good afternoon, sir. Could you please state your name and date of birth? Matt Seth Colgate, uh, 2004. All right, thank you, Mr. Colgate. You were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights right before I called your case. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right, and Mr. Colgate has sought appointment of the public defender, so I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you for this first appearance hearing. Um, any argument as to probable cause? No, Your Honor. All right, um, Mr. Colgate, you were arrested on a charge of failing to register as required by law as a convicted felon. I've reviewed the charging affidavit and find there is probable cause uh, for that charge. Um, Ms. Catano, any request with respect to bond? Ms. Jenkins, can you provide some insight into the defendant's criminal history? Yes, sir. 2013 to 2017. Robbery, PT, simple assault, battery on a bill, resisting officer without violence, VOP, felony um, petty theft, resisting recovery of merchandise, aggravated assault, criminal crime against a person, simple assault, 11 2018, possession of marijuana, possession of drug um, paraphernalia, 2019, criminal mischief, and loitering and prowling. All right, state. In this case, based on the violent history of the defendant, the state will be asking for a higher bond in this case, Your Honor, taking into account the uh, danger to the community. Anything further, Ms. Catano? I guess I'm surprised in light of the criminal history that he does qualify. Yes, sir. 
All right, bond will be set on the sole charge, second degree misdemeanor in the amount of $750. Um, in addition, um, he'll be placed on pretrial release. Next court date on demand. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. That'd be bond with PTR, right? Correct. Thank you, sir. The next case is just one moment, please. The next case is the State of Florida versus Tiffany Cox, 2023, CF 1084. Appointed. Ms. Cox, would you please state your name and date of birth for the record? Tiffany Cox, Marshall University. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Cox. Uh, you were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights before I called your case. Do you view that video and do you understand those rights? Right. And Ms. Cox has sought appointment of the public defender, so I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you for the purposes of this first appearance hearing. Um, I understand you may need to make a record, um, even though I found probable cause for these offenses with respect to the different defendant, so I'll let you do that, Ms. Catano. Just identify them with specificity. Previously stated, uh, the court will find probable cause with respect to each of the charged offenses. Um, Ms. Catano, bond. Pre-trial release? No. No? Did she qualify? Your Honor, no, she didn't qualify. Okay. All right, bond is set as to count one in the amount of $1,000, count two, $100, count three, $100. That's without PTR. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cox. Judge, could we get a, a no return order on that as well? Um, yeah, the conditions, the non-monetary conditions should mirror those in place with respect to Ms. Bruner, which are no return to the scene of the offense. Um, and I believe I'm not going to order that necessarily just because the allegations don't. Next case is 2023 MM839, the state of Florida versus Meredith Fusilier. Good afternoon, ma'am. Would you please state your name and date of birth? Meredith Fusilier, All right, thank you. Um, you were provided, or you were shown, rather, a video that advised you of your constitutional rights before I called your case. Did you view that video, and do you understand those rights? All right. Uh, you are here for a first appearance on a single charge of misdemeanor battery. You have sought appointment of the public defender's office, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you for uh, this proceeding. Ms. Catano, uh, did you wish to be heard as to probable cause? No, Your Honor. The court will find probable cause to believe the defendant committed the offenses, or the offense rather, with which she is charged. Ms. Jenkins, has um, contact with the alleged victim been made? No, sir. Has the state had any contact? 
No, Your Honor. Ms. Catano, what says the defense with respect to bond? Yeah, in the absence of any testimony that would justify anything other than a no contact condition, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not going to grant that. So, but I will grant the defense request. Well, I should ask the state if you want to be heard. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the state will be requesting a no contact and also uh, no firearms, no weapons in this case. And um, we would ask PTR to talk about the history of crime history of the uh, defendant. She has no history, Your Honor. All right. All right. Bond is set in the amount of $100. And um, with pretrial release, um, court will order non monetary conditions of release as follows. The defendant shall have no contact with the alleged victim, Mr. Ratcliffe, um, and they must maintain separate residences during the pending of this action or until further order of the court. She will be permitted a one-time return to the residence accompanied by law enforcement for the purposes of obtaining her personal effects. Obviously, the court presiding over the case going forward will have the ability to modify that, those, non, those conditions of release, if the circumstances warrant it. Anything else, Ms. Cateno? Nothing for the defense. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Next point, date on the man. The next case is 2023 MM840, the state of Florida versus Brandon Good. Katie appointed. Good afternoon, Mr. Good. Could you please state your name and date of birth? All right, thank you. You were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights before I called your case. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? All right, you've sought appointment of the Public Defender's Office, and I'll appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you for this first appearance hearing. You're here for a first appearance on a single charge of misdemeanor battery. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and find there is probable cause to believe that you committed that offense. Ms. Cateno, what says the defense as to bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, this is a simple battery. It's not domestic. So um, Mr. Good does qualify for direct trial release, and he would request that. Ms. Jenkins, um, can you give insight into criminal history? Um, the only thing he had, Your Honor, was from 11 2017 resisting officer with violence. State wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. We will ask for a no contact, no firearms, no weapons, no pocket knife. The court will grant the defense request and release the defendant to direct PTR with a condition of release that he have no contact with the alleged victim in the case. Thank you very much. Next court date on demand. The next case is 2023 CF 1085, the state of Florida versus Bernard Herring. No application for this defendant. Afternoon, sir. Would you please state your name and date of birth? Good afternoon, sir. My name is Bernard Herring. All right. You were shown a video advising you of your constitutional rights before I called your case. Did you view that video and do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. All right. You've sought appointment of the public defender, and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you for the purposes of this first appearance. Um, you were arrested on a single charge of driving with license suspended or revoked as a habitual traffic offender. I have reviewed the arrest report and will find there's probable cause to believe you committed that criminal offense. Ms. Cateno, what says the defense as to bond? Um, yes, Your Honor, can we um, 
Can PDR talk about the, the history of this defendant? Ms. Jenkins? From 2008 to 2013, robbery, possession of marijuana, no valid driving license, aggravated battery on a pregnant woman. 2014 to 2016, no valid driving license, driving while license suspended or revoked, aggravated battery on a pregnant woman. And out of state of Georgia, he looked like he had an open case for driving while license suspended or revoked. Based on the uh, violent criminal history, the state will be asking for a higher uh, bond amount, Your Honor. Ms. Catano, anything further? driving charges been felonies before? Um, it doesn't show felony. Um, so this is his first as HO? Just a driving with the license suspended revoked. All right, given that um, it's charged as a habitual traffic offender, court will set bond in the amount of $1,000 as to the sole charge. And as a condition of the defendant's release, he'll be Directed not to operate any motor vehicle without a valid driver's license. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. I have no other cases on the docket. Does the state have anything different? Um, I think I have one more, Your Honor, unless I didn't. 